What's up gamers and welcome back to the VODs channel. So today was kind of a different stream, some more reaction based content. We laughed, we cried and then at the very end of the stream I had probably one of the single biggest oopsies in my entire career. If you know, you know, but regardless, I hope you enjoy. There we go. Hello! What's up? How are we doing on this? What day is it? Is it Friday? It's Saturday. Whoops. How are we doing on this fine Saturday? This fine, fine Saturday. You guys are alone on a Saturday. La Mau. Pathetic. I laugh. I laugh I XD. Sad stream. Yeah, this is a sad stream. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen, but uh, we have released the new video. We've got a new main channel video. Let me, I don't want to show this. I'll show this. Uh, got a new main channel video up now, boys. There we go. It is, uh, it's the best game you should not play. Uh, th the problem is we've been trying to look for a thumbnail for it for so long and we just couldn't find like a decent one. Uh, but I think... I think we're just going to settle with Mr. Breast. Hang on, I'm trying to move chat. How do I move chat? There we go. It's probably that way. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to... Uh, trying to make a good compromise with the thumbnail, but we couldn't really find anything. So, this is the thumbnail. This is the thumbnail we're going to have for the main channel video. I, I think originally it was like one of the main characters like crying or something. And then we just kind of thought, yeah, it's not really like getting clicks, so... Because it's so weird that the, the way that my videos work, the, the way that my videos work is when I upload a video on, on the main channel, they always do shit. I don't know why they always do shit. I mean, I, I know why. They, al they always perform. So when you upload a video onto YouTube, you get the option to like see how, uh, see how it's performing, right? On the YouTube studio. YouTubers will know this or anyone that uploads. Basically... 1 out of 10 is fucking amazing. You pugged it. 10 out of 10 is terrible. And you're on suicide watch. So all my videos I upload on main, they always end up being 10 out of 10. And then they slowly climb up over the days. Because I got told by someone at YouTube that the way uh, long form videos work, they don't recommend the long form video to everyone initially because it's so long. It might scare people from not watching the video and they click off YouTube. And, and someone clicking off YouTube is the worst thing in the world. That's like someone... That's like someone clicking off of TikTok. That's terrible for them. They want to keep you on the site for as long as possible. So they've got like an algorithm for long form videos where they slowly recommend it over the coming weeks. So it's genius, right? You spend like three months on a video, you upload it and you think, oh my God, no one's watching it. What was the fucking point? But then it climbs up over time. So I, I think it was a 10 out of 10 when I uploaded it. And I think it's like... Uh Fuck you. Uh... It was a 10 out of 10 when we publicked it, and now I think it's like a 6. So it's slowly climbing. Yeah. It kind of sucks it didn't get a million views in a day, but uh, it, I think it will over time. I'm really happy with it, though. I'm really happy with that video. The thumbnail is kind of... I I think this is the best thumbnail we can get. Because this is like a, a screenshot. But because it's basically like a... There's like a multiplayer segment in the game where you can like rub banks and shit a little bit like Payday. So I just... I said to my editor, Matthew, I was like, why not just get Mr. Mr. Breast in the thumbnail? And then add a Minecraft bank. But the best... W me and my editor were fucking crying over the thumbnail, right? Because the... Uh, when you start a multiplayer game... The TTS is too quiet. Yeah, I'll bump it up. I feel like I've got like... Fucking mucus. Okay. So, basically, th there's a multiplayer mode in this game. Why am I explaining it? Why am I explaining it? I'll just fucking show you. So, I'll skim over it. Basically, th there's a multiplayer segment in this game. And it's called... It, the entire game is about playing a criminal. And the multiplayer segment does exactly that. So, the cool thing is about it most of the game modes in this you play as a group of mercenaries doing like a robbery and then you uh get money and then you extract but the mode is called it's called fragile fucking hair in my mouth it's called fragile alliance 
So anyone that you team up with in the game to steal money with, you can then turn on them and then kill them for their cash. So if you've got a million and your mate's got a million, you think, I kind of want his million because then I can use it to buy better guns for the next round. That your English overlords have conquered. No. Uh, so that was a good aspect. But obviously then you get two mil, you exfil, you get more money. But then everyone knows you're a rat. They call you a traitor. Uh, and you're marked for like death by everyone on screen so anyone can then kill you if you're a traitor and they get no repercussions for it but as well anyone that dies uh on the job they come back as a cop they can actually go and uh you know kill they can kill you and get their money but basically get revenge it's cool it's i, I really like the game i really like the game it's not it i if they gave kane and lynch 2 that's the name of the game a bigger budget i reckon it could have been really good but I was surprised by the comments how many people actually watched the game. Uh, no, not watched the game. Sorry, played the game when they were kids. Because it came out like 10 years ago. And we got some uh, we got some donos. Uh, what we got, what we got, what we got. What we got, what we got. Let's have a little look. Thank you, Alec, uh, for joining. Uh, thank you, Adam, for joining as well. So... What I want to do today, I want to... tested positive for COVID today. Is it cringe to catch COVID in 2022? I mean, if you survive it, then, you know, power to you. How much will I need to donate for you to play Project Zomboid? I've played Zomboid. Zomboid's really good. It's really good. It's it's hard, though. It's very hard. I, I tried soloing it, and I just... I keep being fucking obliterated. That's such a difficult game. But I really like it. But yeah, overall, Kane and Lynch is such a good game, but it just wasn't fleshed out enough. That's why I kind of called it the best game you shouldn't play, because it's a, it's a great game. It really is, like, stylistically, and they do some cool stuff. Watch Corey. What do you mean, watch Corey? You mean the Corey Kenshin video? I don't... I don't, I don't you, you're asking me to watch Corey. I don't know what that is. Are you on about fucking Corey in the house? Watch the tape of him on trial. Are you asking about the Corey Kenshin? No, I'm not watching Corey in the house. Definitely not after the uh, allegations. Okay, I think you're on about Corey Kenshin. Okay, and this is interesting. I did kind of want to... The sad part about this stream is that we'll never get to see Petscop 2 JKJK. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll I remember watch. one time in 2017 during the Times Square car crash. My parents used my giant head as a shield in case the car exploded. Well, you have very nice parents, obviously. Okay, so I, I want to watch I want to watch this first. This came up in my recommended. And then maybe I'll watch uh, the Corey video after because it is kind of... It is interesting, the Corey video, because there's definitely a lot of favoritism on YouTube. Watch some CBT. Cock and ball torture. Uh, thank you, Ikulul, for joining. By the way, guys, bit of a shill here. Bit of a soulless shill. I know. So basically, if you join, if you scroll down next to the subscribe button, there's a join button. And if you join, firstly, you become based. It is literally called based, the tier. If you join, you get a bunch of emotes. They're really cool. Like this guy who just joined now, he got his own pyro emotes. And as well, this goal above me, we will be one step closer to reaching. And I won't move it this time, I promise I'll commit to it. Oh I promise, God. I promise I'll commit if to it this time. you try Roblox, I'd suggest Decaying Winter. It's hard like really hard like winning is an achievement, but it's damn good. If you try Roblox, I'd suggest Decaying Winter. Okay, I'm gonna screenshot that. I'm yoinking that. Thank you, Ewan, for joining. Right, I'm gonna watch this now. I'm gonna watch this because this is, this is Minecraft for free. Minecraft for free. If you were looking to play Minecraft for the first time, sometime between twenty. Yeah, you know I love so much about these videos. You've always got this little like, disclaimer at the beginning. I do not support or endorse piracy of Minecraft in any way, shape, or form. It's like, please, lawyers, when you bring the hammer down, do not bring it down on my head. I pray. I'm sometime between 2011 and 2012. It's like when you put those disclaimers saying the video, like, don't send anyone hate and stuff. Like, I, I think I used to do that. It, it doesn't do anything. It really doesn't. 
It really doesn't. Well, like, 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 if you want to stop something like that, you've really got to put your foot down, not just put, like, words on the screen. Thank you. Uh, holy shit, we got people joining. Thank you, Uncomfortable France, Rose Peaches, uh, Sean. Thank you for joining. But you just didn't want to pay. Well, you probably stumbled upon this website. Minecraftforfree.com I remember this website. I, I, I didn't use it. Uh, if it sounded like I said I used it, that is pure slander. I never used it. I swear though, no, you'd get so much like dodgy adware running this, right? Like uh, Trojans and shit, I swear. Oh, my mic's quiet. Hang on. Is is that? Hang on. My, uh, yeah, I got my mic. It, is that better? Yeah. Okay. At the time, it was the when most popular to play Five Nights at Los Polos Hermanos. Ha ha ha. Get it? Breaking Bad reference. I'm so effing funny. Oh, I would not say you're funny. I would not say you're funny. Thank you, Tartigan, for joining Plastic Dream and Boss. Popular Minecraft pirating website. All you had to do was click on the website, agree to a disclaimer, and bam, you were playing the full version of Minecraft. No this looks, I know he's probably got this from like an archive site. Oh, wait, chat, what happens if you go on Minecraft for free now? I'm not doing it. It probably grabs my IP or something. Bam, you were playing the full version of Minecraft. No strings attached. But one day, the site simply vanished without a trace. My my mic's quiet. Is it okay now? It should be fine now, right? Hang on, let, let me... Is is my mic okay? Hang on, let, let me do it. My, my mic's quiet. Is it okay now? No, my mic's fine. My mic's fine. I don't want to, like, blow anyone's ears up. So what really happened to Minecraftforfree.com? Well, this story is just crazy. So let's get right into this. On December 12, 2010, the domain for minecraftforfree.com was registered, and not much later did the site- By visiting this page, or by playing Minecraft, you agree that you are in no way, shape, or form affiliated with Mojang or its affiliates. You also agree that you'll take no legal action. I, I thought this would be some like mumbo jumbo to throw people off, but they're basically saying, you better not work for Mojang. You better not sue us, because that'd be really mean. That'd be really mean. You better not do that. You also understand that the owners, users, and staff of this website cannot and will not be held responsible. Okay. No, it's a self-governed website, guys. It's like a Peetopia in Family Guy, when Peter Griffin starts his own island. It makes sense. This website is only to be used for educational... <laughs> So I, uh, you know, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna go commit first degree murder, go blow someone's brains out in a video game, and then I'm just gonna say it was for educational purposes. I have never like, like the word educational does so much legwork with this stuff. Wait, go live. This is this is basically just a copers. Please don't sue me. It was created by a user named Dylan, who would actually end up becoming a member of Team Evolution, a Minecraft griefing team. Now the interesting <laughs> thing about. The <laughs> the guy that made Minecraft for free became like a troll. Like that that's so good. That, there's something so poetic about that. This website is that it wasn't just them. It's mean? No, it's exactly what I'm talking about. Hang on, we got some donors. We got donors. Byro watch embryo Wallace. It's a new YouTube ARG. The embryo Wallace. Oh hang on. I love how two of my favorite soundtracks are in one video. Samantha's rest and reconstructing science. Hey Byro, ever heard of Princess and Conquest? I'm sure a degenerate like you would like it. Well, that wasn't very nice. Just a clone of Minecraft, but it was the complete, actual stuff. game, Shout playable in your web browser within seconds. For hooking me up with these GB weebies. Fuck twelve. Why does this website look like it's operating at like 7 FPS? Minecraft, but it was the complete, actual game, playable in your web browser within seconds. How was this even possible? Well, that looks like it runs on like AOL online. Well, a few things. Stop For pausing the video. Okay, sorry. I I'll do what Forzen does and just like sit there and say nothing apart from breathing heavily. First off, in Minecraft's early days, Playing the full game within your browser was actually a completely normal thing, fully supported by Mojo. I know this sounds stupid, but like, is it is it just me or there's something like so nostalgic about the whole Minecraft backdrop, like with the, the, the low draw distance? There's something so... There's something so cool about that, I don't know. 
They even gave you the option to play in your browser on Minecraft.net as a Java applet. As a result of this, it was extremely true. To Someone donated six dollars saying here's my one hour minimum wedge. Thank you. Simply copy the whole game onto another website and remove the paywall. The only issue that this would cause is that you wouldn't be able to join servers because you weren't actively logged into a Minecraft account. I mean, the issue would be that it's fucking illegal as well, I think. They're, they've literally ripped the game one-to-one -one and then just made it free. But it was still essentially... <laughs> Look at... Is that... There's no way that was the actual frame rate. Actively logged into a I wouldn't even... I'd just pay. Just pay at that point. Look at that. Game. So people simply not oh wanting my to pay God. for Minecraft flocked to minecraftforfree.com. I, I can't tell if it's like... If that's how the game ran, or just this is the guy's computer that made the video. If you'd visit the site for the first time, you'd be greeted with a disclaimer, explaining that the owners of the site can't be held responsible for it, and that it's for educational or demonstrational purposes only. You know this reminds me of? When I was in school, uh, you know how like when you go to school, and you've got like uh, the computers that you use and shit, like uh, during break? And how people would use them to play like video games on, but then you'd always get like told off and shit. No, no, that that wasn't it. I remember when I oh no, yeah, that that was it. Stop pretending to be me on Discord. No, no, I never do that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so here's a funny story. When I was uh, younger, you'd have like IT classes, right? And in the IT classes, everyone would like you know play video games and shit, and like just try and not get caught by the teacher. But like, what you would do is you, you had this school, you had this website that had like a bunch of Java Flash games. I, I think it was called Friv. Uh, Friv. I'll see if it still exists, actually. Hang on. Friv. Is this... Okay, yeah, yeah. So this was it. I used this so much as a kid. It was called Friv. And what you did on Friv is you just play all these Flash games, right? But then the problem is the teachers kind of wised up, right? And they'd be like, oh, I know that site Friv. They play, like, games on that. They're not getting their work done. Because you'd lie to the teacher and be like, oh, it's for education, but it's not. So what Friv did, the Giga Chads at Friv, and this... They invented the exact same website and they just called it Friv for School. So it has the URL Friv for School and it is all the exact same games and it just says that it's for school. So, <laughs> so kids would log on to this and then say, no, 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 you don't get it. It's for school. It's, it's educational. It's educational. It was such, I mean, it, it, it worked for about a week. It worked for like a literal week and then everyone wised up to it and the teachers were like, nah, nah, I don't. But for a week, for a week it worked. Now I just don't understand why this disclaimer was even here in the first place. Obviously copying games, I loved it. the entirety of Minecraft. Yeah, that and mini clip as well. There's so much. And making it free is illegal. And I don't see how this disclaimer gives them any legal backing for this website. But either way. I mean, it doesn't. It gives them no legal backing. It's, it's literally the equivalent of saying, Your Honor, I did it for the Vine. The site did stay online for almost two years. Until one day in 2012, Dylan, the website creator, received an email at four in the morning. It was from Notch, and he was pissed. Yeah. Unfortunately, the original email was lost to time. No, we no, no, no. We know that Dylan, likes, like, he freaked out and he deleted it. He freaked out and he deleted it. That was not lost to time. Storm Surge, another member of Team Evolution, he told me that the email went something like this. Take down Minecraft for free immediately. You will be hearing from my lawyers. Notch was obviously not happy especially given the fact that Minecraft for free was listed very high in Google search results. There was actually one point where if you search terms like Minecraft for free <laughs> or free Minecraft, the website would literally be at the top of yep. the list, even above the actual Minecraft. I mean, it, it, it's kind of genius. It's kind of based, but also I would be annoyed. I would be annoyed if, uh, if I made a game and then someone just calls it the same name, but for free, like imagine like Skyrim for free. Like we've, we've all done a bit of pirating in a video game, but it's kind of funny. Sight. So Dylan immediately told Storm about the email he got from Notch. Something I just love for Dylan as well, they used the Minecraft Steve skin. Just this unassuming, completely, this innocent gentleman. He did nothing wrong. Guys, all he wanted to do is make the game free for everyone. For everyone. Anti-work. Anti-work. Something had to be done quickly before he received a loss. Eat the rich. Doorstep. And that's when Storm got an idea. Now, this is where things get absolutely insane. So stick with me. Thank you, Zanis, for joining and Jake. All of this. 
the game publisher Bethesda attempted to sue Mojang over their new game called Scrolls. They claimed that by Mojang naming their game Scrolls, it infringed on their copyright over the Elder Scrolls series. Now, I remember this. I, I remember something similar to this, actually. Uh, it was in an internet historian video. And you know the game No Man's Sky? Sky TV, which is a... Sky, which was a news company, was trying to sue... Uh, hang on. No Man's Sky versus Sky lawsuit. Yeah, there you go. No Man's Sky settles name dispute. So apparently there's a company in the UK called Sky and it's like a big conglomerate, right? Like it's a news company. It's an entertainment company. Uh, so they they apparently wanted to trademark, trademark the word Sky. So they just wouldn't let them use No Man's Sky. But I think they dropped it. But like, it's so like, okay, if you come up with like a name for a company or something, that's fine. But a fucking word, a commonly used word, like imagine trying to like copyright the word grass. It's not even a, okay. If if this game was called Sky, I'd kind of get it. I, I mean, I wouldn't. There's no fucking crossover, right? It's not like it's not like Sky is EA. It's not like it's a publisher or an entertainment company. It's not even like it's a video game. There's no competition there whatsoever. But I'd kind of get it, as opposed to Sky, No Man's Sky. No, he said the word that we use. No, no. And then and then the company Grass comes over and they start suing you as well because someone said touch grass in the comments. Just so bizarre. Series. Now this is of course absolutely ridiculous. You can't just copyright a word. So after they want to though, these billionaire conglomerate companies, they want to copyright singular words. Watching Coffee House Crime, he talks about murderers and stuff. Coffee House Crime. I'll have a look. I mean, I'm still gonna keep watching this video, but I'll have a look at a uh, coffee house. Uh. Okay, I will keep that mod. Cheers. And we got, uh, let me let these two donors in. Sorry for calling you a degenerate pyro, but you should check it out if you haven't. It's an RPG that's not YouTube friendly, but Terry's still videos of it up. Yeah. Hey Byro, loved the new video. It was weird seeing not in the head game for once. Been a huge fan for quite a while. I've been watching, see you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I'm happy it wasn't in the head game either. It just had an insane person in it. Some back and forth between Bethesda, Notch came up with a pretty unique idea. Challenge the best three from Bethesda and Mojang to a game of Quake 3. Whoever wins keeps the right. Wait, to wait, 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 wait. Who suggest? No, that's trolling. I can definitely see how people can get Skyrim and Scrolls mixed up. I mean, both games have mining and crafting and awesome dragons. Oh, got him! Oh, these nuts! Pretty unique idea. Challenge the best three from Bethesda and Mojang to a game of Quake Three. Whoever wins keeps the rights to Scrolls. He was serious, but Bethesda backed down on the offer. And eventually, the case was dropped. We won the interim injunction. We can keep using the name Scrolls. They can still appeal the ruling, but I'm very happy. And we've settled with Bethesda. Yay. Anyways, so how does this... This was like before he went insane on Twitter. Uh, that's madness, though. Like, the word Scrolls? The case was dropped anyways. So how does this relate to the Minecraft for free situation? Well... Uh, did you know that companies can copyright color? Yeah, I do. I know all about uh, Hamelindigo Blue. It's disgusting that, um, that a company can copyright a color like that. Dylan and Storm knew that the site had to go down no matter what. But just to up the ante, Storm told Dylan to reply to the email challenging Notch to a game- Please tell me you guys got the reference. Come on. Someone in chat tell me that they got the reference. Did no- Did no one get the fucking reference I just made there? Are you jo- Are you joking, chat? I made the best reference right there and none of you got it. No! No, 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 don't say it now because you saw one fucking guy say it and you're parroting him. No! No! I know that you, one guy got it right and you're all parroting him now. F fuck off. Fuck off. Game of Quake 3. Actually uncultured. Uncultured. best three versus Team Abolition's Watch something else that isn't Minecraft story mode. Best three. If Team Abolition wins, they get Minecraft capes. If Mojang wins, 
Team Abolition would have to hire a dubstep artist to make a song in Notch's honor. This offer was obviously insane. Wait, what was the offer? Email challenging Notch to a game of Quake 3. Is Notch's the... best three versus Team Abolition's best three. If Team Abolition wins, they get Minecraft capes. If Mojang wins, Team Abolition would have to hire a dubstep artist to make a song in Notch's honor. This I, I feel that's really not in Notch's favor. That's that's not that's not in Notch's favor at all. It's like giving away Minecraft capes that have a lot of value as opposed to just making a song that gets seven views. But also, Notch is like minted at that point, right? So he could easily go and find like the best, like most cracked like Stockholm, Oslo, Norway, like Scandinavian, like esports team. This offer was obviously insane. And Dylan was skeptical about sending this as he didn't want to. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Fat first. That's not actually Little Tay. That's not Little Tay. How do I view it? How do I view it? That's not her. But it's 50 quid. It might be. How do you, how do you check? How do you check their fucking name? Chat, can you go? Can you go on uh, her her fucking channel? Is that little Tay? The little Tay just give me fifty quid saying fat first. How do I do that? It's not. It's not her. L L. Yeah, her fucking parents probably still got her in the. Well, what even happened to her? her fucking parents? Dragged her off the internet or something, right? Like she fell off. I think she's getting fucking harassed too much. Man, I thought we had some fucking clout in the chat then, man. Thank you, little Tate. Thank you, little Tate. So it's going to say fat furs for like half the stream now because you gave $50. I hate you. Right, anyway. Uh, where's OBS? Yep. I want to get sued and had no content. I mean, you, you say fat furs. I'm just going to use it for commission money. So who wins? Who wins? Not you. Not you. About the Mojang Bethesda lawsuit. But Storm told Dylan to trust him on this and send it. So he did. And what's shocking is that 10 minutes later, Notch responds. I emailed a guy handing out Minecraft for free and asked him to take down the site. He challenged me to Quake 3. This is happening. Accepting the challenge. Okay. Okay. Later, Notch and Jeb got is this? No, no, no. I, I feel this. these events are moving too quickly. Did this actually happen? To a match of Quake 3 with Team Abolition. Notch even live streamed the match publicly. What? 10 years ago. This actually happened. I thought this would just fizzle out or something. While Storm recorded it and uploaded it to the team. Oh my god. This is... Hang on a minute. Quake Live. Okay. I, I Hang on. Hang on. Quake Live. Uh, Notch. I spelled it wrong. Oh my god. It's real. Andrew Tate has been hired by Blizzard following his recent comments towards women. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... It's actually real, and it's Notch himself, not just... I mean, poor guy, he's probably gonna get fucking ass-blasted, right? Imagine if Notch was, like, secretly cracked. That'd be genius. Team Abolition YouTube channel. Both are actually still watchable to this day. That's madness. Now, here's the thing. At the time, Notch had no idea of Team Abolition's existence, and thought he was just battling random people that pirated Minecraft. So yeah. when Notch's livestream viewers saw the usernames he was playing with, the chat went insane. Some viewers were very mad that Team Abolition's brand that you just endorsed. We like to make people angry in games. It's hilarious. Trust me. He was giving this griefing team. Man, others. I, I kind of, I kind of rooting for Notch, right? He's definitely lost. He's, we know he's lost. We know he's lost. But imagine if he was like secretly cracked. Bring them on. Now Notch wasn't looking at the stream chat, so he still had no clue. But he did eventually realize and was cool with it in the end. Anyways. Notch's team ended up winning, probably because it was Dylan's first time ever. Oh, wait, Notch, what? Oh, he was cracked. He actually was cracked. Realize and was cool with it in the end. Anyways, Notch's team ended up winning. He's not even bottom fragging as well. Holy. Hang on. Show me the stats. Show me the stats. So that's his ping. Damage. Oh, my God. He's cracked. Boys. Look at the he got he got 24 and their top fragger got 27. He's at notch is cracked. Like I'm not even joking. Oh Jeb as well. Is that that's ginger Jeb, right? Like the guy that's still working on Minecraft now. 
Yeah, that, uh, oh my god, imagine being a trolling team and then you get fucked by Notch. Notch's team ended up uh, he Notch Gaming. Notch Gaming, guys. We need that as a YouTube channel. Probably because it was Dylan's first time ever playing Quake. That's, that, that's cope, that's cope. So the capes were a no-go and Storm had to hire a dubstep artist. Lamau. Yeah, I told you it's not worth it though. Look at that. How many views it get? How many views? 12,000 views. Just not worth it. Not worth it. Had to hire a dubstep artist Lol. to create a song for Notch. The song was appropriately titled. I feel like I was just watching one of my own montage parodies. Then I actually felt like a shiver go down my spine. Didn't win. I would have no, I kind of like winning. Oh, you can just... What, what year did this come out again? What year did this come out? You can just tell. This is like some 2013 shit. Hang on. When did it come out? Yeah, 2012. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Oh, that we didn't win. I would have no, I kind of like winning. Actually, just let, let, let GTA wasted green screen. Because I, I love it. Because when you chroma key, you can still see that green little flash for a second. Ah... But the fact Notch accepted the challenge like this over blatant- No, that's base though. That's base. Like most people would just throw the letter in and be like, you know, get the fuck off my site. Which he was allowed to do, by the way. They're stealing his game. Plagiarism of his- Wait, wait. I kind of just realized at no point did they discuss about taking down Minecraft for free. Have we noticed that? that, that, that no, no. If they win or they lost, Minecraft for free stays up, by the way. Game is just awesome. Maybe one day they'll have a rematch. Then Notch can prove his Quake honor once again. After all of this, Minecraftforfree.com was taken down forever. Yeah, okay. It actually hosted the classic version for a while, but it eventually went offline. Taken down forever. Clones of the website were of course made, but they were also short-lived. Mainly because Mojang officially dropped support for playing Minecraft in a web browser once patch 1.6 was released. And soon after that, all in-browser Java applets stopped being supported no! entirely, and the functionality was removed. Now I need to migrate to my Microsoft account. No! From most major web Honestly, I, I don't know if any of you can relate. Migrating your Minecraft account through Microsoft when they bought it was fucking aid car. Like, who remembers their Microsoft login, their, their Xbox login? Fucking no one. Jesus, that was such a pain in the ass. Browsers like Chrome and Firefox. This made any websites that still hosted a free version of Minecraft effectively useless. So that's the story of Minecraftforfree.com. It was short-lived, but it had a pretty incredible ending if you asked me. All right, chat. What what are we watching next? I was gonna game some Isaac, but I I feel a bit I feel a bit of react Andy. I could I could react to some more stuff first. I've got like two hours before I gotta I gotta leave. What we got? What are we thinking? There's a fat delay on chat. I don't know why. Uh, Sunny V2 again. I, I, j bro, he's gonna make a, he's gonna make a video on me if I keep reacting to him. Seth video. I've already seen Seth's video. It's sick. I, I reacted to it on stream. Sunny. Okay, a guy that was a member said it. So, thank you, Almond. Uh, Raylan for joining. All right, yeah, we'll do. I don't like reacting to him too much, though, man. Come on. I, I feel like I'm milking him a little bit here. Uh, okay. I don't really care about vegan teacher. Uh, Quebble Cup. Mr. Okay. What What were we thinking? Mr. Breast or Quebble Cup? Mr. Breast or Quebble Cup? More sunny. I'd probably want to watch the Quebble Cup one. I don't really care about the, the Mr. Beast cancelling stuff. I think it'll just... M most of it'll be bait. April two. He's watching another Sunny video. How the mighty have fallen. He's completely irrelevant. God, this piratical guy fell off. I hate him. That's why I keep throwing $10 at him. Hey, Pyro. Have you seen the Project Zomboid challenge of a dude self-sustaining himself in the house he starts in? No, I haven't, but I know the one where, like, you're drunk and you're naked and your house is on fire. That one's pretty hard.
Okay. You should check out El Maxo's video on Bing Soy Team Fortress. I think you would enjoy it. Right, let's get started. Oh, joke. Thank you for the gifted. You piece of shit. I despise you. Right, let me... Uh... 2020. April 2021, 97.9 million views. April 2022, 8.5 million views. I don't like when he does this. I don't like when he does this because he's basically like, Sonny is making the analogy that this guy fell off, right? I get less views than Quebble Cup's lowest month. I get less views. I don't... I don't like it, man. I don't. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we will be counting down our picks for the top ten saddest streams. This is a pretty sad stream. Like, like this wasn't a sad stream before. Play all but the Call of Duty games on veteran. Like my monthly views on my main, I think is like four mil. This guy gets double, and I get it. I only upload on main like once every two months. I get it, but that's, yeah, that's uh, damn. Sunny's actually gonna make a video on me saying I fell off, man. Are you going to do a review on Cruelty Squad? I'm literally scripting it right now. In the space of only 12 months, Quebble Cobb's viewership has fallen by roughly 90%. And we're going to outline no, every single mistake. We didn't get it, Cobbs. We didn't. Point. Do, do we still... Uh, hang on. Let's do this. Let's do this, Cobbs. Can you react to anything from Atrocity Guide? Oh, someone actually did a compilation of it. Hang on. Oh, no, no, that's it. This is it. Please do this. <laughs> Please. Oh, he had, he had such my sweet summer child. He had so much, he had so much optimism. He had so much happiness in his soul. <laughs> that's like a six year old bit. I like how that's still just in my head. My brain is just this catalog of like really bad memes that you're just gonna pluck out. Bubble Cop, aka Geordie, a little bit of slack. We need to specify that because he's a gaming YouTuber, some of this decline has actually been out of his control. Yeah, YouTube gaming has kind of fell off a bit. It's weird. It's like commentary. Have you noticed a lot of the UK commentary scene is just dead? Or like American commentaries kind of slumped a little bit? It's really weird. Like, get one thing I've noticed with a lot of gaming YouTubers, they tend to make their videos very long now. Like Jacksepticeye and Markiplier. You know how like when Amnesia came out, the original Amnesia in 2012, you'd have like PewDiePie making like. I mean, okay, so hang on. Let, let, let's look at PewDiePie because this is a good example. Uh, PewDiePie, Amnesia. So yeah, so this is him playing it. Yeah, and each episode is like 9 minutes, 11 minutes, 12 minutes, 10 minutes. So each episode is dead short, right? And how many parts is it? 34 parts! You what? That's insane. So 34 parts. Uh, but now, if we look at... Because obviously PewDiePie doesn't do gaming content anymore, really. Jacksepticeye is probably a better example. Uh, so when Jacksepticeye plays a game, he'll play it for... Yeah, there you go. So an hour and 40, 38 minutes, an hour, 59 minutes... An hour and 40. So like the, the way the algorithm is now, it does cater to longer videos. That's why my video, that's why I uploaded the uh, the long form videos on the main channel because they do well over a long period of time. It's almost like an investment. It sounds really weird to say. Uh, I think, hang on. I'm spelling it wrong here. It's a C, not a K. But Corey, uh, yeah, even Corey's videos. Jesus. I mean, look at, I mean, look at this, man. An hour long, 6 million views. Uh... 6.4 an hour and all this is from what I, yeah yeah all this is is basically the equivalent of a live stream highlight it's just him and dashi sat there uh like gaming but there's like like very minimal editing and stuff it's insane but it still gets like six million views like, like i'm trying to do the math here i, I don't want to do what ludwig did because ludwig said that i made a million dollars from my utopia video which is not true I'm trying to gauge how much money he would have made off that if he put mid-rolls in, like a lot of mid-rolls. He probably would have made, like, I'm, because it's Corey as well, he'd be on, like, that good boy CPM. Uh, probably $100,000 at least for that video. If I'm being conservative, maybe, like, 70K. But probably over $100,000 for that. If he was doing mid-rolls right, and the way to do mid-rolls right is put one every two fucking minutes, because <laughs> they never play. But yeah, anyway. 
We've explained in past videos that gaming YouTubers often have a very volatile career as their view count is directly tied to the popularity of whatever game they happen to be playing. We can see this trend when looking at Quebblecop's best month ever back in August 2019 when his channel would achieve a monthly viewership of 166 million. Oh my god. That's... what? What's Mr. Breast on now? Hang on. What's Mr. Breast on? Mr. Beast... Mr. Big Breast. What's he on? So he's on... 500 mil so quibble cup's peak was like a fifth well oh less than a fifth more than a fifth of what uh jimmy gets that's insane wowzers that's really good at the time minecraft was coming back into the main you know what i i i didn't want to share this as well this this kind of just came into my head you know there was a point where i was kind of close at joining quibble cup's group but i never did it this was like when I was looking at leaving uh, MLG videos, I got into a call with him, uh, with Quibble Cup and Sluggo Man. And I was basically- two part five, it's been five year also do a postal retrospective or something PLS. Yeah, I do postal. But yeah, no, basically he, I, I tried to get into his group and I basically begged it off him. I, I, I got on a call with him and Sluggo Man who's like the British one and his profile picture is like a red slug. You'll probably see him later in this video. And I was basically just like, I, I was begging off him to like join his group. And he was like, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll have a look. We'll have a look at your statistics. And then when I said like bye to them and shit, they probably just both laughed. It's like, no, we're never, we're never taking him on. It's genius. I was, I was a little leech, a little parasite. Thank you, Daniel, for joining and Chris in stream bolstering Quibble Cop's content. Whilst Fortnite was still in its prime YouTuber phase, giving him countless opportunities. Bro, the Fortnite views were actually insane. Like, okay, so I remember, I know I keep pausing every five seconds. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I, sh I should just watch the video in silence and not say anything. But, uh, like, Musel, Musel kind of fell off, I think. Yeah, no, nah, he fell off. But if you go to his most popular, it's probably, all, yeah. Look at that! 20 mil 26 mil oh my god like four years ago two years ago that's insane that is insane it's it's so weird though like because like muse out now like it, it fell off but then you've got other people that evolve their content like a uh, laser right let's have a look at laser beam i don't really watch this guy like ever but hey, Rio, i'm just donating to interrupt you thank you prick like yeah he still does well I mean, obviously, like, Laserbeam is well-connected as well with, like, everyone, like, Vicstar, KSI, like, uh, Dream, Minecraft group, he's, you know. But he's still relevant. Okay, he's not uploading as much. What's his second? Has he got, like, a second channel? TikToks that'll make it... Yeah, I mean, he does the TikTok reaction shit. I don't blame him. That shit is just, like, view generator. Every big streamer I see just always does, like, TikTok reaction stuff. I need to do that on stream. I need to start doing TikTok reactions, man. We need to go further down the rabbit hole. We need to lower the content more so I get more money. Come on. Guys, why aren't you suggesting this to me? Jesus. But yeah, no, TikTok will just always be like infinite money generator. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 YouTube will always be evolve or die. It will always be evolve or die. Like the, the main channel videos I upload, the game reviews... I could make so much money by doing other things, but that, but I, th I think now I've kind of found a balance between being like a little whore and making, you know, whoring myself out and making money on the second channel, but then taking time to fund, uh, to make content on the main channel, the main channel videos. Because the, the main channel video we put out, the Kane one, is, is I'm really happy with that. And then we got Cruelty Squad after that. And I, I really want to do a video on uh, Entropy 02. This will probably, this, you'll probably see a video on this on the main channel uh, eventually. But I played this on stream. Holy shit. This game, this is free, by the way. This fucking knocks Hunt Down the Freeman. You can't even compare. This mod was amazing. It was so good. I'm definitely doing a video on this at some point. Definitely. And then hopefully if they make a third one, they can get me to voice act for it because uh, I'm an amazing voice actor, as you guys all know. Right, anyways. Opportunities for fresh new videos. Since Jordy had I talk so much and we're we're not we're less than a minute in. <laughs> no control over the popularity of these games. You might go ahead and call this an element of luck. However, almost everything else which was bringing in these 166 million views had been a result of Quebble Cop's actions. For example, Jordy was a master at collaborating with other YouTubers. I'm a YouTuber. No I wanted to know. man, don't do TikTok reviews. I mean, I wouldn't do TikTok reviews. I'd, I'd watch something that was like a four out of 10 funny. Something that you do like a nose exhale. And then I go. <laughs> it's so funny. 
YouTubers. I want to get to know all the YouTubers. Hmm. I want my friends to be YouTubers or people that are doing similar stuff. This became most evident after forming a YouTube trio known as Robust, which included Quebblecop alongside two other familiar faces, Jelly and Slogo Man. Quebblecop explained that his first- I don't even know if that's good though, right? If your entire friend group is just YouTubers. I feel like you need to have like- you need to have like actual friends that aren't in in the industry to kind of ground you a little bit. That's a viral. Like I, I remember when I was first on YouTube in like 2017, basically all my friends were YouTubers. And now I think it's like a third of the people. No, no, probably half. H half my friends are YouTubers, but then the other half just, they, they do other stuff. Like, like, like they don't even do YouTube. I feel like to have your entire friend group be YouTubers, that's almost like all your friends being you know, in the same office block as you and not being able to talk to anyone else. I don't know, it might be a bit suffocating after a while. The video with over 14 million views was him, Jelly, and Slogo simply messing around on GTA 5. As their relationship strengthened, a video where Quibble Cop simply met Jelly in real life for the first time gained over 12 million. It's genius how this always happens though, right? If you notice this, you'll always have these YouTubers that blow up and then when they do a video meeting each other, it juices. Like, like this is basically three years before uh, Wilbur met Wilbur Soot met Tommy in it and that video juiced and the thing is you go back and watch that video of, of Wilbur and Tommy It's such a mid video. Nothing happens that they just walk around Broughton Pier and everything's subtitled But because it's these two huge creators at the time meeting. It's just like, you know, two fandoms combining It's like fucking infinity stone shit million views. The trio were even picked up by PewDiePie's YouTube network Revel Mode alongside Markiplier and Jacksepticeye with the subscriber count of Quebblecop, Jelly and Slogo being the best piece of evidence for the success they'd find as a trio. In addition to forming the robust group, Geordie began dating fellow YouTuber Azzyland in 2016 with Azzy herself having a multi-million subscriber count at the time. 13.4 mil? Oh my god. 13.4 mil? Jesus. What's she on now? Oh, she fell off. Oh, I thought she'd be getting millions. Okay, yeah, no, she fell off. A lot of YouTubers did this, by the way. They they jumped on this uh, TikTok trend, this YouTube shorts trend, voice break. Don't laugh. You laugh, you laugh at the voice break, you get a ban. But like, yeah, a lot of YouTubers jumped on this shorts trend because they thought it would juice views. But yeah, no, she, she kind of, she did a bit of falling off. Was she like a prime? 50 mil, 46, 46, that's madness. Good lord. Good lord. Yeah, it was like three years ago or something. You know what amazes me? The fact that Sniper Wolf still gets views because Azzyland just reminds me of Sniper Wolf. But look at her views. Sniper Wolf's views are... What the fuck is that? Okay, right. Some pregnancy fetish shit. Anyways. But like, still like... 3 mil, 6 mil, uh, 2 mil, like that. Madness. Madness. I, I love as well how so many YouTubers have like copied this. Y you know, where like they have their face like reacting and then they have like a little bar. I think, I think Will, I think Will still does this. Hang on. Let's see if, oh, he changed his channel name to like Will and he react. That's right. Oh, does he not have it anymore? I think he went through a stage where he did it as well. Or am I chatting shit? He reuses the face so many times. I mean, I would as well, though. If I was uploading daily, I would definitely run out of... You kind of run out of, like, emotions to pull, right? After a while. But, yeah, no, I, I don't even blame Will for doing these. Like, it's it's such garbage content, but it's just, like, money printer. Like, I would 100% do this in a heartbeat. Meaning that they could collaborate on various different videos, providing further growth for each creator. Yet the overwhelming driver behind Quabble Cop's extreme viewership was without a doubt his laser focus on the content in combination with an unwavering work ethic. After beginning his channel, Geordie made a commitment to upload one video. It's just the amount... I hate, I hate the internet, man, because I just think of Wojak's now when I see this shit. Every single day, which he would continue for a period of over nine years. 27th of August, 2012, I said to myself, I'm never going to miss a day of uploading, no matter what, no matter what happens. And every day, I'm going to make a video that's better than the one before. Additionally, this is like me saying, guys, th this is basically me at the end of every stream when I say, guys, I'll probably be live tomorrow. Let's see what happens. And then I disappear for two and a half months. All of his energy was being focused on one channel only, ensuring that the one daily video was always of the highest quality. Every day I worked on it. Every day I studied it. I watched tutorials. I read articles. I spoke to people. I th this just comes across to me as the dream suite where he said he studied Reddit. Hang on. Please tell me, please tell me it's still there. Please tell me the tweet's still there. 
please tell me the tweet's still there. Where is it? Where is it? There's a tweet where he says, I studied Reddit. What the fuck is this? There's a tweet of Dream where he says, oh, here it is. It's, uh, it's so good, man. It's such a good tweet. I told my sister four months ago that this time I was ready and I was going to blow up. I bet my friends I would hit 300k before a year. This is when I was at 1k. I worked my ass off learning about YouTube and the algorithm. I studied YouTubers. I made a plan. I studied Reddit. <laughs> I don't like... What kills me is like, if he said, I studied YouTubers, I studied Reddit, I made a plan, that... that would actually be okay but it's almost like he has to finish off with studying reddit like it's the final boss <laughs> i studied i i went on to our oh, okay buddy chicanery oh bro i gotta make a video on oh, okay buddy chicanery because the, the harassment they're doing to the better call civil cast is fucking genius practice and every day this chicanery videos. and within this daily upload it was obvious that quibble cop's goal was to ensure the most optimal experience for the audience i was making videos that my audience loved watching right so i asked myself what does my audience loves the lo love the most each of those clips from quibble cop's discussion on the watch time I, I, I still remember with quibble cop as well like he reached that point of fame where kids would like come over to his house and stuff because you have that a lot with you like thankfully that doesn't happen to me because i live in the middle of fucking nowhere like, it's literally, like, e even if people knew where I lived, it'd be, like, it'd be such an effort to even come here. But, uh, hang on. Quibble Cup, uh, fans at house. I think there's a video where he tells them to, like, fuck, uh, no, I can't find it. But fans came to his house, and he basically was saying, like, no, 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 go away, go away. I mean, it happens to a lot of people, to be fair. Also displayed just how switched on he was in terms of personal development and the correct attitude required in order to grow a successful YouTube channel. So if he had the correct attitude and mindset in order, why after five years of gaining an extremely consistent 100 million views per month, did this number drop to between 5 and 15 million over the course of only a year? Well, in order to answer that question, let's begin by looking at a Twitter post made by Quibble Cop in early 2020. I think what happens with a lot of YouTubers as well is they just, they, they go into other projects they don't enjoy doing YouTube anymore. Because one thing I've noticed with a lot of YouTubers that blew up huge, they only they were kind of only on the platform for a couple of years, right? Like, for example, Rice Gum. Rice Gum was one of the biggest. And then you kind of just forget about him. Like, uh, J Jadeon, right? Jadeon. Jadeon's fucking huge. In five years, Jadeon will probably be looking at, like, stepping down from YouTube and doing other things with his millions. And then someone else will take his place. It it's a constant cycle. Every five years, there's a new wave of uh, people that come onto the site and then the old people just get kicked off. Or you're like me and then you cling on by a fucking thread. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Obviously, if someone you don't like falls off, that's hilarious. But apart from that, most people kind of just move on. 20. Before things go any further, I want to address the rumors. After three and a half years of being together, Azzy and I recently broke up. I have nothing but love and respect for this beautiful, smart, and caring woman. Please respect our privacy. Thank you. The thing is, he's talking about like a breakup, and he's talking about it in a very professional way, saying that they have love and respect for each other. And his profile picture is like a mugshot. He, he, his face right there actually looks like the, you, you know, the 3D Better Call Saul face? That, like the thousand yard stare, like he... <laughs> Beautiful, smart, and caring. Could not have had a worse Please profile picture when saying that. Thank you. Which was accompanied by a video approximately one year later. No, good God. If, if I ever had to make a video like this about a breakup, I would actually shoot myself. I, I could never imagine having to make a video like that about a breakup. Jesus Christ. Conveniently, just before his views began to decline, explaining the reason behind Like, I get it. Your audience are actually 12, like like seven. Okay, I'm not going to say 12 because it's probably my audience. Like, like seven, seven. But, you know, just, oh, they're breaking. There's something so demeaning about that. Why did you guys break up? Well, as you guys might know, I'm from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and Azzy is from Canada. And it was a long distance relationship. Once the honeymoon phase. Yeah, that's, uh,. Yeah, eight hours. Eight hours is pretty bad. Like, when I see my girlfriend, I gotta fly two hours, which is fine. That's fine. But eight hours, yeah, even, yeah, that would, that would be hell. That's basically a day. That's a day of traveling. Relationship. Once the honeymoon phase was over, we realized that we're two people from completely different places. However, it would still be a little far-fetched to blame Quibble Cop's decline in viewership on nothing but this separation. Sure, he had one less person to collaborate and make videos with. However, I like the Vine thud and then it changed to like, uh... 
negative. However, if we take the date of Geordie's separation announcement, March 2020, and place it alongside his view count at the time, he actually went up in views after breaking up with Azzyland. Of course, there were other factors at play during this time, such as people being at home and therefore watching more YouTube due to the pandemic. Yet, as an overall, the data doesn't really suggest that this breakup had much of an impact on his eventual. Thank you, Trip, for joining. Edam, uh, total fusto and Casper Day. Which will decline in views. However, it wasn't only Azzyland that Quebble Cop would stop making videos with. After five years of filming together, the robust trio being Quebble Cop, Jelly, and Slogo would also slowly disintegrate. Instead of playing with Jordy, who was busy making various reactions. I met, I met Jelly in real life. I met Jelly in real life. He's the only one, he's the only one that I've met in person. I met him so briefly. It was at an insomnia event. I think he was doing like a, a meet and greet for like one hour or something. But yeah, I got, I got a picture of him. I'll see if I can find it on my phone in a bit. But yeah, no. I, I, I can't even say if he was nice or not because our interaction was so brief. But the fact that he let me take a picture, like, he, and he had no idea who I was. He probably thought I was a fucking fan. But yeah. Also slowly disintegrate. Instead of playing with Jordy, who was busy making various reaction videos, Jelly and Slogo replaced him with a different YouTuber by the name of Craner, which was noticed by fans on Reddit. The last thing I remember was that Quebblecop was playing Minecraft with Jelly and Slogo Man in Robust. Okay, Town. okay. I love Sonny to bits, I really do. I think he's an amazing guy. He makes great content. But to say people noticed on Reddit and he's referencing a post that has 10 updates in two years. I like I, I do not think Quebble Cup has a Reddit community. It's like it, it's weird, right? Because if you've got like that young audience, they don't really go over to Reddit. Like my my community, I'd say, is like I I have no idea what my average community age is because everyone lies, right, to watch like 18 rated videos. I I I'd say my average I oh, know chat, chat, what chat? Say, so, say, so, what, what's the age in chat? What's your age? Because uh, I'm trying to gauge like what the I, I'm thinking late teens to early twenties. Ten, nine, five. Yeah, I fucking give up. I actually, I give up. I actually give up, man. Like you, you, I genuinely. Uh, <laughs> two. Yeah, yeah. You just got squirted out by your mother like two years ago. 15, 19, 420, lol, the weird number. Uh, tw okay, I'm seeing a lot of 20s. Yeah, I was thinking late teens to 20s. Some of you are like, you're 10? Okay, T 10 is like, no, you're not, no, fuck off you, 10. Hey, Byro, when are you gonna play TF2? After the bots are eradicated or when the heavy update drops, I'll wait. When are we gonna play TF2? Now every I play it sometimes. Everything has changed. Jelly and Slogo Man replaced Quebble Cop with Craner in a new Minecraft server. Quebble Cop made his own solo play, and right at this moment, he's only doing reaction videos. What is going on? Anyone got the explanation for it? Why is he now not playing with his friends anymore? Why isn't he playing games anymore? Is he going to maintain it like this, or will he come back to his own self again? First, he took down the vlogs, but then he stopped playing with friends. As this became an increasingly no! common discussion in Geordie's comments section, not his he uploaded friends. a video titled "Why I Left Jelly and Slogo." Did, did, did he? Did, he did not reuse the thumbnail from the the fucking breakup he did not he did not hang on a minute hang on a minute he did not my stream crashed uh hang on okay he didn't he didn't reuse it but he he literally pulled the same face <laughs> it's like it's like eh, it worked for the breakup we'll do it it worked for the breakup. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. I titled Why I Left Jelly and Slogo, explaining that as a result of making video after video with the group, each of which following a similar narrative, Quabble Cop felt as though he wasn't growing due to a lack of creativity. I saw that my creativity was running out. I was just doing things with the group. I was going into that direction. I realized that I stopped growing as a person. I am so happy that I, I don't do group content. I'm so happy I don't do that because that is my one biggest fear. I love doing content with people, 100%. But I'm so happy that like I've kind of carved out my own area and I'm not reliant on a group because that would terrify me so much. That really, my, my biggest worry is being in like a group doing group content and then uh, like, you know, th there's drama or something and someone falls off. Helping me not just absolutely down. Thanks, Pyro. No worries, uh, Prasad. Thank you for the five, man. Yeah. It's uh, like, I love doing group content, but I mean, like if my content was only group content, like imagine I did no game reviews and shit. I, I, I just did group videos. That would scare me, man. That would, that would, there's so much responsibility there as well. And that I just stagnated. To be honest, it's so good. Please never break up. Is it though? Is it though? I don't know about that.
I don't know about that. To be honest, podcast be like everyone on it is old except you know I'm the youngest person on that podcast, by the way. I'm the youngest person on that podcast. So that is proof that it's full of fucking boomers. In life, and I was just doing the same thing. Jordy also explained that at around the same point in time, he'd become depressed, which made him feel as though he was holding the group back. I ended up getting a depression, which I've never, ever, ever said anywhere publicly, but it was also holding them back because I couldn't give them the energy that they needed to make these videos good. And as a result, he began to participate in fewer and fewer recordings. It wasn't a clear. That sucks. That definitely sucks. Uh, I, I, I can kind of relate to that a little bit as well. I think what helped me a lot is, uh, is actually, you know what? I'm not memeing actually. What's helped me a lot is the second channel because what I would do for the main channel is uh, I would just script all day and then not be able to have any kind of outlet apart from like, you know, meeting mates and working out and stuff, but, but no outlet and content. I think this second channel has been such a great release for me, honestly. Like being able to, you know, interact with, with you guys as well. I, I, think, I think it's really good. It, it's helped me a lot mentally. I can see why people live stream. I remember Jadeon saying like, you know, group uh, main channel videos are like effort, but then like second channel, uh, not second channel, live stream videos, he just gets to chill and talk to you guys. And, and I agree with that a lot. Live, stre live streaming can be a bit of work, but it's fucking therapeutic, man. Because considering most people that you watch, most content creators are in their fucking bedroom for like, you know, 15 hours a day, like 10 hours a day. It's good. It's really good. It's a good, th it's a good form of like catharsis, man. Cut. Bye guys, see you tomorrow. And instead it was me joining less and fewer and fewer and fewer recordings. From this point onwards, Quibble Cop was no longer making videos with the group, which had helped him to become so successful in the first place. He then began to collaborate with a new YouTuber going by the name of Tiger, yet this would also end in another bit of drama. Me Did he reused it? Wait, no, was this... Now he's using the... Look at that, look! You can see the... Hang on, let me move my cat. Let me move my camera. He you look, you could see the purple outline where he, hang on. You little piece of shit. He, did he yoink? Hang on. He yoinked that from the break. He yoinked it from the breakup video. I knew it because it's got the purple outline as well. You really went onto his breakup video with his girlfriend and then you cropped out the thumbnail. His face I to reuse it. Your mouse on the video. <laughs> really having it off the screen and I feel the need to stare and in another. Thank you. Oh shit. Bit of drop. I need to like. Yeah, there we go. Armor. Me and Quibble Cop got into a fight, and after this fight, I was pretty much left with nothing. Quibble Cop found Tiger when he was still a small. Okay, that's a terror. Quibble Cop got into a fight, and after this fight, I was pretty much left with nothing. Okay, so two things wrong with this. Firstly, he's British, and secondly, he's got a D squared hat on. That's two strikes. You're out. Quibble Cop found Tiger when he was still a small YouTuber. Is Tiger is Tiger still around? I don't want to make fun of a guy that's like juicing, because he's he's gonna make a video on me. I mean, yeah, I, I that's bad as well. You shouldn't call yourself Tiger. You shouldn't call yourself like you need like a brand name. You shouldn't call yourself like, I mean, Leafy. No, but Leafy. Yeah, no, nah, actually, no, nah, forget I said anything. Oh, okay, so he's juicing now. He's under a mill. Oh, okay, never mind. Wait, why did he quit? Chat, chat, why did he quit? He was juicing. He was getting like, what? I'm going to be playing Minecraft with half a heart. Now, guys. I've never heard of that concept, actually. Minecraft with half a heart? Jesus. Fucking art's original. No wonder. Where, where, where'd he go? Okay, don't tell me he dies. Chat, don't say this again. Okay, so he hasn't uploaded for a year. He has no socials. He has no socials. Has he got like a Twitter or anything? Check out Hero's channel. Check out Quibble Cup's channel. He has no socials. What the fuck? And while the details aren't public, it seemed as though Quibble Cop offered guidance and growth to Tiger in exchange for part or full ownership of the channel. I'm like, this guy could be a really big YouTuber if I would coach him a little bit. He he is he has so much talent. Now this went exactly as planned in the beginning. They started playing. How do you coach people? I, I never understood this, right? People that say that they can coach you into being a YouTuber. It, it, it's like, the, you know, you know, when like Jake Paul and Andrew Tate and that, they sell you these life lessons. And then it's like, the first thing you need to do, you need to diversify your portfolio. You, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. No shit, bro. Really? So you're telling, hang on. So you're telling me, I can't just put all my money in Ethereum or poop coin. I got to put it in Dogecoin as well. Wow. Hang on a minute. Next, you'll tell me I need a personal account and a business account. What? You bloody what? 
He didn't die. Stop saying he died. Because that, that, I'm going to feel like a piece of shit if he actually died. Well, I haven't even made fun of him, have I, so... But he, he, I mean, is, I he has bit. so much talent. Now, this went exactly as planned in the beginning. They started playing together and pretty quickly Tiger's viewers... Can you guys actually stop saying someone died when I don't know what happened? Because it freaks me out. Like, I'm actually... I'm, at, I'm genuinely... I genuinely get anxious thinking that they died. Like I'm going to be a piece of shit. It skyrocketed from 2 million views per month to 20 million views per Thank month. Thank you, Barry, for joining. However, at around the same point in time... Hang on. We've got uh, donors I need to let in. Uh... Funny sex number them out. Are you going to talk about the Corey situation or are you not going to bother since it's been covered by pretty much every Mike Slobbering commentary channel? Yeah, I was going to say, everyone's talked about it. It's a bit redundant. I mean, maybe I could watch Mr. the video. Cynical, if you still have the time, can you react to the Has Been Hotel Stalker by Bernie Vids? Has Been Hotel Stalker. I never that. do donations. You just <laughs> just the, the two worst things I think I've heard in my life. Has Been Hotel and Stalker. I to give you this. Thank you. Thank you. Pyro, can you place your mouse on the video? It's really distracting having it off the screen. I can't focus. Thank you. What's wrong with you guys? I just got here 57 minutes in. What has happened so far? Uh, nothing of value. Absolutely nothing of value. Thoughts on Eliafi? She's so cool, right? I'm not Eliafi BTW. He died, I killed him, smile. I'll if I'd be like, jokes, Discord banner. Time, Tiger randomly stopped uploading altogether. <laughs> Two months later, Tiger would upload a video on a different Oh, channel. wait, 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 wait. He's back. Liger. Why do you call yourself Liger? It's just, you're giving yourself an L. Liger. So he is back. Would you do a review of the Prince of Egypt oh. channel? Literally best animated film. It is a good film. It's a really good film. Okay, so he is back. He is back. Okay. Two we Ah, uh, no. Nah, he kind of fell off a little bit. He fell off. I mean... I don't know what... what, what why did he go to a different channel? Ah, uh, maybe... I'm not even born yet. I'm ethereal. I'm here, but not at the same time. I love your content, but I can't truly enjoy it until I physically manifest. I'm one above all and under... Most normal parasitical comment and just complete schizo ramblings. So I'm guessing he moved over to Liger because maybe Geordie had control of his main through a contract. Channel titled Why I Left Quibble Cop and Tiger. Yeah. Explaining that he couldn't talk about what had happened with the channel. And I'm not going to get too much into who was in the right or who was in the wrong. Okay, so it was probably a legal dispute and Geordie probably made this guy sign an NDA. Like a non-disclosure agreement. So he didn't, he, he's not allowed to talk about it. So he just can't go into details. Because you, you'll be amazed at how many YouTubers throw NDAs at you just to work with them. Like I remember, uh, what's his name? Uh, so, so, I was thinking Sunny V2. You, you know Sunny? Sunday? What's his name? Sunday? Hang on. Sunday. Uh, I don't know what his name. Yeah, yeah, Sunday, Sunday. I, I, I was gonna work with this guy on a thumbnail, I think, or something like four, like six, seven, six, five, six years ago, five, six years ago, I think, like a good while ago. And just to do a thumbnail for him, even though he gave me no access to the channel or anything, he still wanted me to sign a non-disclosure agreement. It was so bizarre. I, I just said to him, even though I was like a teenager, I was like, I, I don't understand like why you want me to, I think I was like 18 or something, or maybe 17. I don't remember. But I just remember it being really bizarre that he wanted me to sign a non-disclosure agreement to do a thumbnail. Even though I wasn't going to get access to his channel. Like, what, what could I discuss with him? He didn't tell me anything. Um, I can't. But he was no longer friends with Quebble Cop. Everyone is asking the same thing. Why are you not uploading to Tiger and what happened between you and Quebble Cop? Well, guys, it essentially boils down to one thing. And that is that me and Quebble Cop are actually no longer friends. I <gasps> no! This is like Iron Man and Captain America falling out. No! I feel disappointed. I feel betrayed. I hate to say, I, I, I'm sure this, this Tiger guy or Liger, I guess, could be a really nice guy. But I've never heard someone explain how betrayed they feel in a more artificial way. It's, it's like, he's definitely reading a script. But it's just like, we are not friends anymore. I feel backstabbed. You, you know, okay, okay. He isn't doing this. But do you know how so many YouTubers... 
I, I want to... Okay, I'm going to go... Uh, going on a bit of a run here. There's this one YouTuber. I do like his videos. Actually, no, 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 no. I'll... I'll, I'll uh... Oh, we're halfway through. Fuck it, I'll do it. So this is guy called Max the Meat Guy. I do like his videos. I really do. They're great. Whenever I'm like taking a shit and I pull up my phone, I pull up shorts because TikTok won't load. So, but the way this guy speaks with his, is it cadence or, hang on. Chili crisp pulled pork cooked inside of clay. So, so I, one thing I've noticed with short YouTubers, they, they talk in this weird tempo where it's like, da, 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 da. Duh, 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 duh. It's like, today I'm going to get this pulled pork inside of clay. First, we get the brisket and then put it in the oven. I, they, it's so weird how they talk like that. And there's a YouTuber that made a video talking about this. And it's it's a newsreader voice. The, the way, when you hear someone talk like this, you'll notice this a lot in shorts and like tier list videos or like tier videos where people, you know, where, where someone explains uh, something you might have missed in a film. Like, did you know in Iron Man? Tony Stark is bisexual. Like, they, they do that because it's a newsreader voice. Apparently in America, especially in America, like in the UK and everywhere else as well, newsreaders are given, uh, are told to speak in a specific neutral way. Because apparently, like, if you hear an accent that isn't like where you're from, you hate it. Like, for example, you know, I'm from the South. If I hear like a, a Northern accent like Geordie, I want to fucking vomit. It's a disgusting accent. I hate it. And vice versa. They hate us. So... What they do is in America, for example, if you hear someone from the from fucking uh, from New York, like I'm walking here, and then they hear someone from down south go, uh -huh, I sleep my sister. They hate that. So what they do in American newsrooms, they get you to speak in a neutral cadence that like doesn't infer or interfere uh, with any kind of like. Uh, it, it's basically neutral. There is a. We, we will get back to Quebble Cut. I'm having a bit of a fucking ADD moment here. Uh, hang on. Why do news? Yeah, there you go. Why do news reporters talk like that? It's super. It's super interesting. This is. A, it's only three minutes long. It's a truth universally. It's so because you'll notice they're all. So okay. So l listen. Okay. Let me go on another guy, another video that he's made, just to give an example, so I don't feel like I'm just character assassinating the poor guy. Today we're combining this brisket and this pork belly with meat glue. This. You see how they talk? He talks in that. I, he's not the only one, by the way. I'm not singling him out. This is everyone in YouTube Shorts. It's so weird. We're gonna try seasoning this steak with the crust from this steak. So okay, uh, there's some guy called Giovanni, and he's like, uh. He does food. Nick, Nick De Giovanni. There he is. So he does the oh, same what? thing, but I don't think it's as bad. I'll see if I can find it. Let's make burnt toast butter. I like the flavor of burnt toast, but I don't like when my toast is burnt. If that makes any sense. We'll start by making. Okay, he's no, he's nowhere near as bad. It, that's actually pretty normal, to be fair. But anyway, th this video is really interesting. It's a truth universally acknowledged. Reporters from all over the world talking in a weird, over-accentuated voice like this. According to the results of a recent study, that appeal is getting better. Barker has worked to get these flames under control. And according to them, it's improving. They always do that, and it pisses me off so much. It's like they'll, before they finish the last two or three words of a sentence, they'll do a very long pause. I fucking hate it, man. I really do. It was worth it. Everything worthwhile. This is the correct moment. This and is a hood a classic. A wake up call but you could see how that Max the Meat guy sounds exactly like this. It's, it's a newsreader voice. Okay, okay, okay. We get the idea. If you watch TV news, you'll know that anchors, reporters, meteorologists, correspondents, almost everybody who holds the microphone talks in this weird sing-songy voice full of over-exaggerated inflections and an accent that sounds like Are people like it comes still telling you to game end yourself with this voice or are we past this? Uh, well, you've you've opened the fucking floodgates now by asking. That sounds like it comes from nowhere. What is newscaster's voice, and why is it clogging up our airwaves? Turns out, newscaster's voice is actually something taught in journalism and broadcasting schools called non-regional diction, or the general American accent. It's a way of pronouncing words that lacks any distinct regional or ethnic characteristics. In other words, as Linda Ellerby, a television broadcast journalist, once famously said, 
In television, you're not supposed to sound like you are from anywhere. Yours truly worked a few years at a couple local news affiliates in Springfield, Missouri, and during my time as a photojournalist, I met a lot of reporters who off-camera sounded completely different than they did when the red light was on. But that's the name of the game. Being a reporter means moving around a lot, often hopping from station to station and region to region as jobs become available. Getting a long-term contract somewhere is pretty rare these days. I'm not gonna lie, I would actually prefer like I watch the news and I hear like a scouse or like someone with a, with a Texan accent compared to that like and then today there were five murders on a bridge in Ohio today PewDiePie killed two people on a bridge in PUBG and then he said a racial slur back to you jobs become available. Getting a long-term contract somewhere is pretty rare these days, and folks who watch local news generally are less trusting of reporters if their accent doesn't match that of the town. So it'll be hard to get hired as a reporter in, say, Dothan, Alabama, if you sound like you're from Boston. The solution, then, is a general dialect, free of anything unique to a geographical area. Non-regional diction is meant to be clear and easily understandable no matter who is watching. After all, as a reporter, your number one job is to convey information. So on camera, reporters speak slowly and clearly, using a tone and cadence that can be understood plainly by all Americans, regardless of what part of the country they hail from. When done right, it should be unnoticeable, something that even the most astute YouTube commenter can't detect. <clears throat> when done poorly, he placing just an wanted over to quickly say, I hope you're doing all right. Am I a fan of Mueller or... You know, if you were a fan of Mueller or Rags, they just released a Doctor Strange review that's sick or no, no if you... Oh, nice, the TTS broke again. Uh, I haven't... I, I don't watch Mueller or Rags, no. I haven't... I, all I know is that Mueller did, like, a 90-hour response to H. Bomber Guy for his Dark Souls 2 video. And then uh, Rags made a video about why he kills on sight in Daisy that he removed top inflection in the same place every time, non-regional diction can actually become irritating and risk losing the audience. So the next time you sit down to watch the evening news and the reporter or correspondent sounds like a robot pretending- But yeah, no, basically, long story short, it, it's just called newsreader voice. But yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I just don't like the, the, it just sounds so artificial. I really don't like it. I really don't like it. It's like, it's weird. It's different in the UK because in the UK, all the newsreaders are just well-spoken, but not super, super well-spoken. They're well-spoken enough that they sound like they went to a grammar school, but not like that they're, you know, that they sleep with their second cousin. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I see that on YouTube shorts a lot, though, that everyone has that kind of that newsreader voice. And when they do like a uh, explaining stuff, it's very artificial. Like, I know for a fact that when I read scripts on videos, I sound horrendous. Like, I, I cannot voice act at all. But I'd rather at least try than just be like, and then he died. I'm the wrong, because um, I can't. But he was no longer friends with Quebble Cop. Everyone thank you, Joke. No, actually, no, don't thank you, Joke. Fuck off, Joke. Uh, thank you, Ewa, for joining. One is asking the same thing. Why are you not uploading to Tiger? And what happened between you and Quebble Cop? Well, guys, it essentially boils down to one thing, and that is that me and Quebecop are actually no longer friends. I <laughs> why, why when he said that, I feel like I'm watching a no fuckers video. Well, guys, so basically what happened is we're no longer friends. I feel hurt. I feel disappointed. I feel... <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is no fuckers like talking about Putin. <laughs> we're no longer friends. I feel hurt. I feel disappointed. I feel betrayed. And most of all, I feel forgotten. <laughs> what would become obvious later was that somehow Quebble Cop had claimed ownership over Tiger's channel as he would upload a video where he'd cloned Tiger's voice and attached it to an AI. Which what? Wait, wait, wait. Quebble Cop did that. Somehow Quebble Cop had claimed ownership over Tiger's channel as he would upload a video where he'd cloned Tiger's voice and attached it to an AI, which would provoke another response from Tiger who was once again insulted by Geordie's actions. He made this cartoon character, loaned my voice, and put it on the Tiger channel. Listen, Jordy. Oh man, that's Jesus Christ. That's messed up. Like you, you, he's basically, what, what did you sign in that contract that he's got ownership of your life? Plus times, I still can't get enough of your total chaos video. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really happy with the total chaos video, even though it's all in the head. What, what did you sign in that contract? Like, like I, what, does he get your sperm as well? Does he get your firstborn child?
This cartoon Jesus. version of you might be your best friend, but I'm not your best friend, okay? I'm not even your friend. And after Tiger called him out, Quibble Cop seemed to panic as he would delete every video featuring the AI Tiger clone. The two would make up on- That's really weird. Why would you break up and then keep using- That's almost like you fell out with a guy and he died, and then you're just like, you've got his fucking corpse on strings. There's something really- Twitter with Geordie stating, Life is too short to have enemies. Life is too short to have enemies. Yet shortly thereafter, Quibble Cop would end their exchange by blocking Tiger on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, life is too short to have enemies, and then he blocks him anyway. Oh my god. Too short to have enemies. M yet. Most sane YouTuber Twitter interaction. Shortly thereafter, Quibble Cop would end their exchange by blocking Tiger on Twitter. I, lo I love that. Reason, I love that, man. My man decided to block me. But you know what, man? I don't care. What's most interesting about this whole interaction is that it correlates perfectly with the point at which Quibble Cop's views began to decline rapidly. However, the reason for the impending decline wasn't the drama itself, but rather one discovery made by Geordie throughout the conflict with Tiger, being that he could make an AI character to act as a real person. One of the biggest lessons I've learned in business is that pretty much everything you dream is possible. Cloning yourself, too easy. Four years ago, I was in the middle of a burnout. Made three videos per day and streamed two to three hours per day. I wished I could clone myself, so I did. What QuibbleCorp is referring to in this Twitter thread is a channel he launched one month after the drama with Tiger, which posts gaming videos and uses an AI character as the main personality within the videos. Now, there's nothing wrong with anyone beginning a second channel. That's so weird. That's so weird. Jesus. You always get these YouTubers that just go on these weird ass business ventures. They're still around. Okay, so 19k. Oh no, they kind of fell off. They kind of fell off. Today is human to dog in GTA 5. Every time I eat a dog cookie, I will upgrade further. And it's my goal to fully transform my body into a dog. And the best place to find a dog cookie is at the dog bar. Don't flip it, I'll give you this nice dog cookie. Oh my god, that's an old lady. I'm just gonna steal that cookie from my bag. That's my oh, cookie, no. stupid old lady. Oh, I got it. Let me eat it. No, 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 no. Oh my god, guys, what? I genuinely feel like I need to be prescribed Ritalin after seeing that. I I actually feel like I need to be prescribed Ritalin. What did I just witness? There was... The video, we're only 28 seconds into the video. I feel like I just like went into a coma and I've been like watching the video for five years. What the hell? That was... Oof. I kind of need... I kind of need a minute, man. That was... Oof. Jesus. But when looking at the numbers, it's obvious that this new AI channel going by the name of Blue was seriously fragmenting Geordie's attention on the main channel. It was launched in May 2021 and began to do 4 million views per month instantly. Yet if we look at the Quibble Cop channel, May 2021 was also the point at which his viewership declined from an average of 100 million views per month to 60 million views per month. Quibble Cop began to celebrate the strides that his AI channel was doing, yet he also seemed completely oblivious to the massive decline that was happening on his main channel. His average monthly viewership was down by 40 million on Quibble Cop while he was celebrating 4 million views a month on blue. It was the very definition of the man who chases two rabbits catches neither, and this decline on the main channel brought about further changes, which would ultimately make things even worse. Webbacop would upload a video titled My Most Important Video with I Quit in the Thumb. Okay, at, at least he actually took the, uh, he used a different image this time, guys. He used a different image. Can't hate on that. Can't hate on that. Nail, explaining that he was no longer enjoying YouTube. I'm having a hard time being creative. I'm having a hard time having fun in my job. I'm having a hard time sleep. I'm always worrying about YouTube, always thinking about YouTube. I'm not enjoying it as much as I was before. Before going on to state that after 10 years, Guys, I've got to quit YouTube. It's getting too stressful for me. I've got like five YouTubers in the basement who signed a lifetime contract. I'm, I'm uploading their brains onto a server right now. It's very stressful. Who is discontinuing the daily uploads. That's why after 10 years of making daily videos, I quit. I quit making daily videos. Quibblecop would finish the video by stating that starting from today, he planned on making top quality content that the audience wanted to see. Starting. Ah, uh, so many people do this. So many people do this and it never ends well. People, the, the problem is it's a paradox. People that stop daily uploading or stop their schedule to bring better content, that creates more effort than the daily videos. It's, it's a paradox. It's a self, it's a paradox that will always fail. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy of failure. It never works because then they build up their expectations too high and then they get even less views and then they think, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? 
It's it never works. I see so many YouTubers do this and then they just fall off. Today, from now on, you can expect my next video to be top notch, to be really flipping good to be exactly what you want to see. Yet the first three videos posted in the days that followed were him bragging about his $10,000 dog, then him bragging about his custom orange G-Wagon, then him bragging about his $7.5 million penthouse apartment. Welcome to my $7.5 million penthouse tour. Let's see if this video can hit 100,000 likes. And it's just... It's nice that they I recorded the... HD and seeing that blue people at piano make chippy almost made me have an aneurysm. My brain just shut down. My brain actually kind of just shut down. That's why I didn't even react to it. It's like, why would you post this dude? Not only have you stated in the past that you apparently don't do YouTube for the money. I don't care about making an extra buck on YouTube. You know what this reminds me of? Do you remember Nico Lol? How Nico Lol was like doing the whole tax the rich bit. And then uh, her boyfriend uh, was like a manager and he's absolutely minted. And then she's like showing off like an apartment that's worth millions. I'll see. I'll see if it's still up. I think she took it down. I know that she disabled ratings on it. Nico lol apartments. Pyros, or may I suggest that every time your subscriber base pisses you off, you should read to a whole blue video from start to finish as punishment. Just like the Oh my God, sir. you're a genius, bro. I'm doing that. I'm actually doing that. I'm going to react to a blue video whenever you piss me off. Look at it. This is so genius though. This is the same girl that would dance for like Bernie Sanders saying tax the rich. And then she's showing off a two. Oh yeah. You, you know when the likes are hidden, it's bad. You know when the likes are hidden, it's bad. Hey, I didn't expect you there. Come on in. Hey guys, welcome to my apartment. I told you guys about a month or two ago that I moved into a bigger apartment and I was going to give you guys a house tour. And I think our apartment's finally like mostly fully furnished, so... I love, I love mocking this video. I've made so many jabs on my channel at this video. It's great. Stink kinda outdoing everyone here. Come on, guys. True. But yeah, no, she, she basically... Like, obviously, okay, I'm going to say this now. Making money uh, and then flexing your money isn't a bad thing to do. I think it's pretty fucking shallow. Uh... Uh, okay, here's a good example. Actually, I got a really good example here. So I, I go to Sweden a lot, right? To see my, my girlfriend, my Discord kitten. I, I go, uh, you know, every month or so to go see her. So we go to Stockholm, right? And in Stockholm, there's a shop that you go to, a resale store, and it's called Plug Me Please. It used to be called Plug Me Please. It's called something else now because they expanded. Amazing fucking store. If any of you are in, like, Sweden, Stockholm, and you got a bit of cash, go there. They sell some great shit. Hey, Byro but... wanted to send you some dosh for a while now, but thank you for the vids. It would be more but can't at the moment hope this buys you a pasty. Thank you, man. But, yeah, basically, th this is a great story about flexing, right? I go to this store. And Stockholm, Sweden, most of it is cashless. You have to use a card, like a debit card or credit card or something. You know, they, they won't take cash. So I never bring cash with me. So I mean, plug me, please. This store, this resale store, they're selling like, uh, they're selling uh, pretty expensive stuff like Supreme, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Uh, I bought a, uh, I bought a Gucci, uh, a Louis Vuitton bag from there, right? Like a resell. It's one of these prison bags. It's like transparent. I can never take it anywhere because I'll get robbed. It just looks cool. I don't know. I just bought it as like a collector's thing. And also you can resell it for like more money down the road. It's like, it's like an investment thing. But one thing I love is that another guy, some rapper in Sweden or, or Turkey or somewhere or wherever, he went to the store and then he filmed himself on Instagram getting like all of these dollar bills right he's getting all of these dollar bills and he's getting his boys to like film him and it's like the bag is on the table he's getting these racks of like you know a thousand krona a thousand krona is like a, a thousand krona you, you remove the zero so a thousand krona is like a hundred dollars and he's getting all these stacks and he's racking them on the table he's racking them on the table right all this money to buy this bag and then i dm the guy on twitter that owns the store uh, on instagram and i said to him Wait, is, isn't it a cashless store? Isn't it cashless? And he goes, yep, Lamau. So this fucking moron that filmed himself buying a bag, he puts all these notes on the table, probably like 50 or so notes. After they stop filming it, he has to go, okay, let's put them away. And he's there picking up the notes, putting them back in his fucking wallet. It's embarrassing. Stuff like that you should be laughed at for. You should, you should, be, you should be strung up and people laugh at you while they throw rotten fruit at you. Like that is cringe. If you want to buy some overpriced expensive shit, go for it. But don't make a sad flex especially like the fact you can't even use that cash it's pathetic man pathetic anyway so moral of the story flexing good uh
Unless I don't like you. There you go. I don't care about the money. I really genuinely do not do YouTube for the money. But do you really think the audience wants to open up the YouTube app and instantly see something that makes them feel... I am so happy I live where I live right now. Like, I, I live in a pretty big house. But, like, I would never... Like, so many of these YouTubers live in, like, a top floor penthouse apartment. I would just become depressed, dude, in, like, a month. I, I, I really could not stand that. Like, the UK... The UK is a bit of a shithole. It's not as bad as America, obviously, but the UK is a bit of a shithole. But, like, yeah, I, I, I don't think I could ever live in an apartment. I, I think houses are just so much better. Superior to you. Do you think new viewers on unless you're living with someone obviously your channel want to open up the video section and see one video saying I quit followed by three videos talking about how rich you are. You think it's just a coincidence that David Dobrik got cancelled in the same month that he posted his brand new multi-million dollar house to YouTube. When you invite envy into the life of others you pay for it in ways which you will not expect. The three videos felt like nothing more than a validation seeking exercise which came off as quite insecure. A 2008 study by the Journal of Consumer Research stated that when people feel powerless and out of control, they feel an increased desire to purchase items which convey high status. Further, this increased attraction to No, Sonny's bringing out the psychology degree, it's done. High status products it's stems done. from a specific inclination to re-establish power, which might explain Quebblecop's motive to upload In these off-brand videos. It's not a bad thing to have money, but you just have to be humble. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why like, when you ask YouTubers how much they make, they, they kind of dodge the question and stuff. Because it's almost like if you have... If you, if it's known that you have a lot of money, you are infinitely less relatable. Videos. Maybe deep down, he felt as though he had lost his position of influence, which was certainly plausible because at the time of uploading the videos, his monthly viewership had declined. Honestly, if you've got money, buy whatever the fuck you want. Buy, buy, buy whatever you want. But yeah, no, you need to be, you definitely need to be humble about it. By over 85. Like when I bought that bag, that Louis bag, that was like way too much money than what I should have paid for because Imagine it was a resell. Off so bad that your brand new form of best content is flexing on people. Yeah, the orange, the orange car, the uh, the, the Scooby Doo truck. Like you know, when, when I bought that Louis bag, uh, that I paid way too much for because it was resell. Like I did not think at any point I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take a picture of myself holding this and put it on Instagram. Because it's just pointless. I, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Five percent from it. Like I, I looked at it like a fucking moron, and I was like, "That looks really cool." I bought it, and, and that's it. It just sits in my wardrobe now until it goes up in money. Peak. Additionally, his house tour might have been evidence that Quebble Cop had fallen into the classic trap of becoming distracted from the channel by the items he was able to purchase as a result of the channel in the first place. This theory could be supported by the fact that after uploading his house tour to YouTube and announcing that he no longer planned on uploading daily, the video slowed dramatically. He went from one video per day to only two videos in both March and April of 2022, doing further no! damage to the channel's new count. Now we can't neglect the fact Upload, that his blue channel Jordy! has actually gained a bit of traction Upload! over the last couple of months, gaining between 10 and 25 million views per month. However, when combining the views of both Blue and Quebble Cop together, even on the best months, he doesn't crack 40 million views, which is still less than half of what he was able to achieve while simply focusing on one channel. In a recent video titled My $100 million GTA 5 Business in Real Life, Jesus, he has a gaming studio. Good fucking God. Which sports us. I never understand how these YouTubers like expand so much. It's insane. Similar kind of vibe to the apartment tour. Quebble Cop talks about how he's also launched an NFT. My, my biggest anxiety of like doing side businesses like this would be like it would just affect the content so much. Like that is insane. Like, like I respect it. I can't hate on it at all. But like it's just so like, like no wonder your fucking channel died. Like you, you spread yourself out too thin. T business and is working on a video game, potentially fracturing his focus from YouTube even further. As mentioned earlier, Quibble Cop is extremely switched on in terms of how to build and run a successful a YouTube channel. Biro uses the word and rents America trying to hide his British debuff and one thousand dollar PS5 shirt. I have a thousand dollar PS5. Okay, you know what, you prick. Okay, let let let's. Let's see how much it is. Balenciaga PS5 shirt. Let, let's see how much it is, right? Because you keep saying it's $1,000. How is that $1,000? Okay, that's probably how much I paid for it. That's not $1,000. It's not 1000 That's how much I paid for it. That's how much I paid for it. It's a, it's a sick shirt. Okay, yeah, it's overpriced. But I... I you know, I, I think I... I okay, to, to anyone that doesn't know... Chat, anyone that doesn't listen to my podcast, uh, to be honest, definitely listen to it. Link uh, link in the description. So I bought this shirt, right? This shirt, because I thought it looked cool, but I still don't own a PS5. I never bought a PS5, but I instead used the money to buy a Balenciaga shirt that said PlayStation on it. 
And like uh, one of the people I do the podcast with, Dolan, he just won't let me. He won't let it go. He won't let it go. It's rent free in his head. Like guys, am I? Am I? Am I gonna? Am I gonna buy a shirt that keeps me warm? That's overpriced, or am I gonna buy something that has no games? Like what am I gonna do? Video, despite hating the game when it came out, might play it again. Like the Ken Lynch video. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I saw it pick up a little bit on Steam charts when the video went out, which is cute. So as a whole, there are two obvious problems that need to be solved. The first problem, which thankfully is relatively easy to fix. Chat, what games does, does the PS5 have? Link games the PS5 has. Like at the minute, Sony Studios are just like, they're clinging onto Insomniac's little nuts and Naughty Dog. That's it. That's all they got. Come on, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. What we got? What we got? What we got? Fortnite? Okay, that's on that's on PC. Bloodborne. Okay, they will never Okay, you've got one fucking game. You have one game. The PS5 has one game, and that came out on PS3. That came out on PS3. One game. The PS5 has one game. You know what? That will Bloodborne will never come out on PC because Sony are so scared of the entire play, PlayStation fan base leaving and going to PC. The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah, you get that game released for the third time full price, by the way. Third time full price. E uh, Minecraft. That, that's on PC. God of War. That's on PC. Call of Duty. That's on PC. Little Big Planet. Okay, so that's Minecraft, but... Shut up. Uh, Spider-Man. That's on PC. But the, the, you have nothing. You have one game. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna retract my statement. The PS5 doesn't have no games. It has one game. The PS5 has one game. I retract my statement. I'm very sorry about that. I I didn't I didn't mean it. Better call Saul. Howard Hamlin is my favorite character. Plan and execution is the next episode I'm watching. Can't wait to see him in it. <laughs> you piece of shit is one relating to ego. Geordie, I know how much we as males love to brag. It's written in our DNA to talk endlessly about how good we are, but you have to resist the urge to do so. Proclaiming your high status by posting videos of your G-Wag in a multi-million dollar home ironically does the opposite of what- all, all I see in this is just like, look at my big lonely apartment. By posting videos of your G-Wag in a multi- I mean, that's me right now, actually. No, that's me. I'm 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 lonely right now. But you you see you see this? This actually means I have friends. The, these little words coming up on the screen here. This is just a guy on his bike being alone. So who's winning, huh? Who's winning? Probably him, because he's got like 200 mil. $2 million dollar home ironically does the opposite of what you want it to, as your audience doesn't want to follow someone that needs to be validated in any way, shape, or form. The second problem is a little harder to solve as it requires either more sacrifice or time, and I could be wrong altogether with this second problem because I'm not sure what kind of numbers your other businesses are doing, but your focus is clearly fragmented, or maybe you have too many things to focus on. You claim to have so between 50 and 100. The video that Sonny made was very disorganized but most of his other videos are organized and researched. Yeah, I, I talked to a couple of Minecrafters about the Skeppy video. Apparently it wasn't a well done video. The on that bike looks like the kid on the big wheel from The Shining. <laughs> employees. I'm running a business with I don't know how many employees. Anywhere from 50 to 100 employees were here. Yet your views are significantly below where they were during any other year since 2016. The potential inefficiency of this was also noticed by some of the sidemen. So Krebelkov was basically <laughs> tweeted out saying that he spends on average 14 days and 14 editors to make one video. 14 days and 14 editors. Bro, I have... I have literally just picked up like a third editor recently and I feel that I've got too many employees. Instantly, I'm thinking your, your team or your process is incredibly inefficient. And while the one step back for two steps forward mentality is a great thing to have, something feels off with the numbers. Maybe you're just bragging about employing way more people than you actually do. And if this is the case, it's just another- I, I thought that was James Marriott then. I thought, actually do. I, thought that was, I thought that was James Marriott. I was like, what the fuck is he doing in this video? I just, literally, I, I just see anyone with like black hair and a beard and I just instantly think it's James Marriott. And if this is the case, it's just another piece of evidence for the previous point. Quit with the bragging. It's not necessary and adds no value to anything at any point in time. When you appeared on the- I've noticed that with a lot of YouTuber companies though, they tend to hire so many people and like half of them are just interns that, that, that do nothing. There was one company that uh, me and some mates knew about 
uh, that had like YouTubers and we'd make fun of them for like just having so many employees that did nothing. We'd say that they'd like inspect the fabric of like someone's off-white shirt to make sure it was legit or something. Yeah, you, 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 you always get so many like YouTubers that have so many like uh, interns that get paid to do absolutely nothing just to make it look like there's a lot of things going on. Watch time podcast with Muse Elk. One very mature thing that you said was that you appreciate when your YouTuber friends call you out on things. So while I was probably a little bit harsh in this video, hopefully it can provide some genuine tough love feedback. All right. I could probably, I could probably watch the Mr. Breast one. I could probably watch the Mr. Breast one as well. The dumbest attempts to cancel Mr. Breast. I love Mr. Breast. Mr. Breast is like my favorite YouTuber. I think he's amazing. From people being angry at Chris for dressing up as a helicopter to the vegan teacher. Oh, that was right. The, uh, the attack helicopter thing. I remember that. I remember that. You're claiming that Mr. Beast was promoting violence by... Okay, okay. I want to get this apparent now. I don't know how much of this video is going to be vegan teacher. Vegan teacher, 100% is a fail troll. She is baiting on purpose to get attention. I already said that before in my video with Tommy in it, but she she is not genuine. She is a vegetarian, a vegan, but she understands. Hamelin be like think I'm in the middle of something. There's really no need to underscore pyro gun colon underscore pyro stare. I fucking hate when I get interrupted, but that was funny. Vegan teacher is 100% a fail troll. She is vegan, but what she's doing is a method of basically she knows that negativity spreads more news than positivity. If she was like vegan three bi three billion and eight, I to like watch many of your streams, but would you do a soma video? I get asked that so much. Yes, yes, I will. Uh, but yeah, sh she's a fail troll because she knows that negativity spreads faster than positivity. If she were to promote veganism, like most people, like post stuff on Facebook and all that, no one would care, no one would care. But by like getting in your face and being like, eat your vegetables, you know, de then you kind of think, oh my God, she's so annoying. I like have to watch her now, I have to hate watch her. I, I, I messed up the, messed up the camera, hang on. Anyway. Anyway. Not having pineapple on his largest slice of pizza. These are the ab- I gotta- Oh, fucking- All that for a bit. Was it worth it? No. Absolute dumbest attempts to cancel Mr. Beast. And it all begins with an image of a helicopter from back Maybe into- watch the Skeppy video. I just think it's very interesting how he didn't do any research on that, but the other ones he does. I, I, the thing is though, I don't know Skeppy Law. I don't know Skeppy Law, bro. Like I. Get the Channel Four watermarked version on UK Amazon or the unwatermarked one. Hang on, I'm gonna go through these donors real quick before we start this. Ironically, I made one thousand five hundred pounds from Dogecoin. If I didn't diversify my portfolio, I would have made almost nine thousand pounds. Yep, that's how it be, man. You should check out El Maxo's video on Bing Soy Team Fortress. It's super interesting and I think you'd like it. You, you, uh, I've seen that spammed in chat. Bing. I to your videos on loop every day for the past week to survive work. Thank you for the content, King. Should I upload new content on a channel that I stopped uploading on? I'm afraid the oh. attention is hurting on the old channel even though it gets... Oh, are you on about this? The new channel doesn't secure me very many views. This video won't get out my recommended. Are you on about this video? Because I probably will watch this. Because this video will actually not... I've been watching you since 2015 and I've loved watching how your content has changed over the years. I'm now 20 and have money to show to you. Is that a Pinkie Pie voice? Was that a My Little Pony voice? I find Sonny's video on Skeppy to be interesting because most of Sonny's video is highly researched, but with Skeppy's, it was out of order and not well researched. Yeah, I don't know Skeppy law though, so I wouldn't really be able to criticize what he got wrong. It's such a good song. Pyro, the Utopia, do I get the Channel 4 watermarked cover versions of Utopia on UK Amazon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get get the UK watermarked one, uh, the Channel 4 watermarked one. The other one's an Amazon one, it's shit. Make sure you get the one with the Channel 4 watermark, because that's the un unfiltered version, the unedited version. It's got the right aspect ratio as well.
Hey, Pyro, being a big fan since you've been bullying reaction video channels, also mind if you still have contact to the podcast cast. It's been a while since Ekindalore has shown any life signs. Uh, I don't have any contact with them, no, but I follow Akandale War on Twitter. I think that's pretty much How it, though. you don't look at the Reddit anymore? Is it that bad I haven't checked? I, I looked at the Reddit, like, two days ago, three days ago. Pyro, you're a dork. Thank you. Right, chat, I'm going to take a piss. I'm going to watch this uh, Mr. Breast video and then I'll watch the uh, TF2 one. Persuasion. Do, do, do. Crystal blue persuasion. That's a song in Breaking Bad, if you guys don't know. Right, let, let, let's watch this. Let's watch this. 2014. Remember when people were going around making the joke that they identify as an Apache attack helicopter? It was a meme that began back in 2014 when a user on Reddit posted a deliberately ridiculous paragraph reading, I sexually identify as an attack helicopter. People say to me that a person being a helicopter is impossible, but I don't care. I'm beautiful. I'm having a plastic surgeon install rotary blades, 30 millimeter cannons, and AMG 114 Hellfire missiles on my body. I think I remember this coming out originally and it just wasn't funny even then. I mean, yeah, it was. I, I always think it was a little bit of an L meme. I'm I just. Not crazy. I know he swapped those numbers. I knew it was 1, Are we really doing donos doing the chicanery bit? Are we really doing fucking donos for the chicanery bit? Okay, if you're going to start quoting the chicanery speech, I'm going to up the dono limit to $50. I will do it. My face when transphobic accusations. If you can't accept me, you're a heliphobe and need to check your vehicle privilege. Thank you for being so understanding. Yeah, this is. Not washing his hands after pissing. Well, Mr. Beast and Chris incorporated this copy pasta word for word in a 2016 video. People say to me that a person being a helicopter is impossible. I'm having a plastic surgeon install rotary blades. Like I get it. It's it's a it's it's a it's a bad joke. It's a not funny joke. I get it. But for 2016, like it, it, the internet was a different landscape then it was so like you know it's the wild west you know you know what i keep finding funny you'll see like someone say oh my god i can't believe joji like showed a rat on a screen during his uh during his live show and it's like yeah imagine what he did in 2016 buddy imagine when he's filthy frank it's time to live my dream <laughs> Hey girl, you want some attack helicopter? I was actually born a tank, but sadly it wasn't one of our 52 genders. And if we take the joke and rank... <laughs> it's just so, it's in such poor taste, it's genius. Rank it on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being least offensive and 10 being most offensive, it probably wouldn't even hit 1 on the scale, because the only thing at the brunt of the joke is a flying metal vehicle. Yet because they- Like I get it, you're, you're, you're belittling people's gender identity, I get it, but it's not, I don't think it's, you know, this isn't like fucking libs of TikTok where they've actually got an agenda and they, you know, they, they hate, you know, like LGBT. This is just like a poor taste joke. Or making a joke about identifying as something. And you know, the worst thing is, the worst thing is, no one would have had a problem with this at the time, but probably the only reason Sonny's mentioning it is because someone recently brought it up. Other than their normal selves, some of Twitter's finest would call the video yep. out over four There you go. After it was I called posted. it. La Mau. I literally called it. Transphobic video. In a now deleted 2016 video, Mr. B says, I was born a tank, but sadly, it wasn't one of our 52 genders. The claim that this was distasteful was clearly ridiculous it's it's the fact that you front load it as well by saying it's transphobic who made this mr beast exposed what some fans i like how, whoever made this tweet i like how they hide behind some fans like i'm not saying it some fans are i'm not gonna say who some fans are it wasn't one of our 52 genders the claim that this was distasteful was clearly ridiculous and the comments supported such where's the transphobia in their people in chat are saying mr beast imaginations i didn't know some people in chat are saying Mr. Based. I'm not saying Mr. Based. Oh, about the discrimination attack helicopters face till now. Chill, the video was obviously a meme. Don't try to cancel. Oh, was it Deaf Noodles? Oh, I'm not even surprised. I'm not even surprised it was Deaf Noodles. Jesus Christ. I like how Sonny censored out the guy's name to protect him. And of course it's Deaf Noodles. You know what? I love... I. The only games that were good on PS5 was the Spider-Man games, but that's been... I love, I love how it is Def Noodles. I'm so, I'm not even surprised there. He, he made a video during my drama, basically like ignoring all the, all the counter evidence I provided and then just said I'm guilty anyway. And his video got dislike bombed to shit and then he never made a video on me again because his video got dislike bombed.
Like, like what, one thing I love, you know, the commentary community, there are so many sides that all fucking hate each other. Everyone in the commentary community kind of bands together to hate on Deaf Noodles because of his like terrible poor journalism. To one of the best people on the planet because they made a video about being an attack helicopter. Literally so many people would be canceled for nothing. What was even funnier was that the people who were supposed to- Like for example, Keemstar, right? Keemstar hates me, I hate Keemstar, but we can both shake hands and say that we hate Deaf Noodles to be offended by the video weren't even offended by it. As a trans person, I found this- now? Who is it you think you see? Do you know how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Are we really you having all the donos be Breaking myself. Bad and Better Call Saw quotes? So funny at the time, and I still do. It's honestly so sad people get mad over stuff like this. It's obviously a joke. Ellen Best fairy. LMAO, my transgender sibling was laughing so hard at this. After reading the comments, I was glad to discover that I'm not the only trans person who thought his joke was funny. Yet these comments didn't stop the original person who was trying to cancel Mr. Beast, who would continue with this excellent piece of investigative. I like how Sonny doesn't even name who the who the guy is as well. Journalism. Like he just knows to not even dip his foot in that. By DMing Mr. Beast and Chris before stating, Hi Mr. Beast, hope you're, hope you're doing, doing well. well. I, was I was recently sent, sent a video, video where you and your, your friend, friend Chris, Chris Tyson make some seemingly transphobic remarks. Chris Chris says he identifies as a helicopter who makes some remarks about gender. It's a video from 2016. Can you comment? Okay, so what, what I'm going to say right now, two words, Twitter journalism. And if you hear the word Twitter journalism, no, 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 not gaming journalism. No, this is Twitter journalism. This is even worse. This is even worse. The whole thing was best summarized by the commentary channel, Memeify. Genuine question. How are you this sensitive to humor? Even just a joke about attack helicopters offends them this badly. And while this cancellation attempt- It's more like he's hiding behind how it's some fans. It's like, you, you give no proof. There was no screenshots or anything of people being offended. Was extremely petty. It was nothing compared to another which would happen at a later date. This new one being so dumb that even PewDiePie jumped in to defend Mr. Beast. It began in November, 2021 after the incredibly popular squid game oh i know what this is going to be this is going to be about the uh that that because i remember jimmy mr breast he got basically told that he needed to donate the money from squid games to charity video was posted and mr beast revealed that the entire production had cost upwards of three and a half million dollars which included a prize of four hundred and fifty six thousand dollars for the winner of the video now this meant that the format wasn't much different to any of his other challenge style videos he puts up a bunch of money in the beginning various people compete for it and whoever wins is rewarded with a pretty hefty payday however for some reason in the case of squid game the success of the video seemed to trigger the response winston so the money should have instead been donated to charity. I'm sure that money couldn't possibly have benefited anyone else. Imagine using this money to actually help those who need that, not for f You know, you know the pe- Okay, with that profile picture, you know these kind of people are like 30. They're like 35 possibly have benefited anyone else imagine using this money to actually help those and the thing is what you know these kinds of people never watch youtube apart from like you know book reading videos or something who need that not for fun you could have just donated the these are people that never would have even watched mr breast the 1.5 million now this argument makes a lot of sense as an extremely basic surface level idea however when you factor in a little thing known as reality it crumbles pretty damn quickly firstly it's infuriating because it can be applied to any amount of money oh you got ice cream on the weekend and got two scoops why didn't you get one scoop and donate the rest to charity i don't, I don't think he needs to make that analogy it, it's more just the fact that like you know unfortunately mr breast is running a business he can't just give all of his money away to charity by making the squid game video he makes an investment he makes his channel bigger so you could even counter argue and say he's making more money in the future that he can actually give away to charity and as well he has the philanthropy channel he's got mr mr breast philanthropy where he gives uh he gives like money to people that are underprivileged and shit in america so it's not like he doesn't give anything back at all he just simply gives half of his money to mr beast philanthropy usually through merch sales and then the other half he loses at poker oh you bought a new car why didn't you buy a second hand car and donate the rest to charity the fact that it's valid in all situations with any amount of money makes it a never-ending loop of why didn't you just spend less and donate the rest to charity and to say that it's different in mr beast's case just because it's a larger sum of money shows immaturity and that the people making these claims haven't thought through the problem in its entirety the claim also displays an embarrassing level of ignorance about mr beast's long-term vision he loses money on every video yeah no that's true he's still well off though like if you if you knew like how much he spends on poker when he goes out jesus christ he's stacked but uh yeah i mean he's got loads of like, like he's his place in ohio is it in ohio where he's based at i think 
I'm not very, I'm not sure. But you've got to keep in mind though, like he's not like he's in the red or anything. Like he probably has more merch sales than any other YouTuber. And merch sales bring a lot. They bring a lot. I imagine like Mr. Breast, if he's got merch, it's probably printed on some like cheap, uh, some cheap Gildan or something and then just sells it at like a huge markup. So he's, he's doing all right from merch. As it fails to take into account that the money invested in the Squid Game video Put your fat furry art away, Wall 2. I'm not role playing with you right now, Wall 2. You are really just donating Breaking Bad bits the entire time. Walter, put your dick away, Walter. Yo, we're going to earn more money, which over the long run will more than likely end up in the hands of the quotal. Someone's like spamming the trans flag and they got like held for review for spamming. So they're probably going to think I'm transphobic now. Hang on. There you go, you, you, you're unbanned. That was the bot that did it, not me. I'm not, I'm not transphobic. Quote, less fortunate. In the month that the Squid Game video was posted, Mr. Beast gained close to 10 million subscribers. And with Mr. Beast's main message being one of helping others, how can we be so sure that those inspired by his message wouldn't donate more than three and a half million to charity themselves over the long run? So sure, he could take the whole 3.5 million and dump it into a charity. But at the end of the day, it's simply a poor short. It, yeah, it, it's such broken logic because, you know, like I said already, he is running a business. He needs to generate income. For himself. What's your fur affinity account? I don't have one. I, I, I've got one to like get past the uh, the, the mature filter, but that's it. I don't like anything or post anything. Short term strategy. It, it's it's such broken logic though. Like it makes zero sense. He needs to make more money to fulfill bigger projects to entertain people, and he has philanthropy. It, I, it's it, it really is just like you need to give everything away that you've ever made instantly or we won't be happy. It's basically people that have never watched him. They're bitter that he has a lot of money, this this money that they will never see in their entire life. And that they're, they're just spiteful. But unlike most rich people, he is actually partially giving that money back. The other problem with these people putting pressure on Mr. Beast to give money to charity is that they probably don't even donate money themselves. Getting to the point where you're comfortable giving money away requires an unbelievable amount of personal development. That's why it's a respectable thing to do. Unironically, like, like complete fact, if Mr. Breast turned up and he gave this amount of money to one of these renters, they would shut up instantly. They'd be like, oh, you're so nice. You've changed my life. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. I don't know why they call you Mr. Breast. Oh, you're such a humble guy. And the people who have reached this point of being charitable are not the same. It's probably people that can like barely pay rent for whatever reason. And they're just doom scrolling on Twitter, punishing themselves. They see this huge YouTuber posting a video, knowing it's juicing views. And then they just, they become bitter over it and take it out on them. Thank you, Soggy, for joining. Uh, Patrick Bateman, episode one or episode two? Episode one was all right. Episode two is actually like playable though. I think episode one is like, episode one's probably the weakest Half-Life entry in Half-Life 2 people who spend their life on Twitter calling out Mr. Beast for being a bad person. Thankfully, almost everyone echoed this sentiment. He gives a lot of money away and through this method, he can generate future revenue to help. Yeah, li li literally what I've just said there. I think he's done a hell of a lot more for the people than you have. Grow up. Look at his channel and tell me he doesn't help people. Grow up. Let this man spend his money however he pleases. The cancellation attempt was so pathetic that even PewDiePie uploaded a stream highlight in defense of Mr. Beast. People were like, oh, you spent all this money like doing this when you could have just like fed the hungry or some shit like that he spent two two million building squid game this is why i hate so much about like twitter journalism as well because okay gaming journalism and twitter journalism go hand in hand what they'll essentially do is grab like two tweets off twitter that have like 20 likes between them and then put it on twitter uh, put it on their gaming journalism website and make it out that that is fact that is what everyone's saying like, what's the title of this? Mr. Beast's Squid Game sparks probably just negativity or... Oh, yeah. Mr. Beast's Squid Game courts controversy. Controversy. But again, it's just like... It, you're li literally... Journalism now is grabbing tweets and then just putting them on your website and claiming that this is everyone's opinion. And people are like, well, he's not doing enough. This is the problem with Twitter. Like, people shouldn't have opinions. Yet neither... <laughs> I like, he, he summarized it in such a blunt way. People shouldn't have opinions. You have an opinion? You have an opinion? PewDiePie no. or Mr. Beast was safe from the next person. I, I am convinced though, like, to, to have an opinion on Twitter, you need to have all your mental faculties in order. Or you should not be able to have an opinion. ...who would attempt the most brain-dead cancellation attempt of them all, that vegan teacher. It began on the 2nd of August 2021 when out of the blue, that vegan teacher would upload a new video titled, Mr. Beast, no amount you give to charity can undo the damage you are causing by promoting... She's a fail troll, man. She's baiting. She's literally baiting. 
hard-hitting meat. Now we need to preface this section by explaining that being provocative is the vegan teacher's main method of growth. Her formula is simple. She picks a beloved influencer such as Gordon Ramsay, PewDiePie, or Darman, then goes out of her way to frame them as anti-vegan in any way. I remember when I made that video, I don't know if you guys watched, right? I made a video with Tommy in it about the vegan teacher. And he was like, he told me in private that he basically didn't want to have an opinion on the vegan teacher because he was worried about like feeding into it. So if you watch that video that I made with Tommy in it, you can tell that he just doesn't say anything. He doesn't add anything. He wasn't uncomfortable or anything. He was, he was like, I talked to him like before we filmed and after we filmed and he was great. He was honestly a great kid to talk to. But like during the video, he was very neutral. He tried to give a reaction, but not actually be opinionated because I think he was basically worried about like, it's snowballing and stuff because this is like you know this is when he first started getting big i think and every youtuber tried to latch onto him possible this in turn gives the commentary community a reason to talk about her providing her with growth through controversy in a similar way to jelly bean or wings of redemption and with this in <laughs> you the vegan teacher got compared to mr look here look listen look here look listen people don't change your slip in jimmy and slip in jimmy i can handle just fine but slip in jimmy with a law degree is like a chimp with a machine gun is a kaya lantern house fire listen to this this is the best clip on youtube look look here look listen <laughs> look look here look listen look listen listen now look here look listen and gives the commentary community a reason to talk about her. I, I love Chicken Wings of Redemption, man. He's great. Providing her with growth through controversy in a similar way to Jelly Bean or Wings of Redemption. And with this in mind, it's hardly surprising that the vegan teacher would eventually come for Mr. Beast. She'd begin by reviewing his I ate a $70,000 golden pizza video by stating that there are millions of children starving around the globe and that instead of buying an expensive pizza, the $70,000 would have been better spent solving world hunger. But before we watch him eat a $70,000 pizza let's look into the eyes of this child there are millions of children around the world who are starving to death seventy thousand dollars could buy a lot of food only this okay so v vegan teacher be like mr breast you haven't actually helped the children in africa so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to put this stock image of a starving child i'm not going to help the kids uh, uh, it's not me it's you you're the problem you need to help the kid. This started the vegan teacher's argument on poor footing as it failed to include the fact that five months prior, Mr. Beast had begun beast philanthropy with the first four out of five videos on the channel doing exactly what the vegan teacher was complaining about, feeding people without access to food. Do more research. He has donated millions to the hungry and the homeless. He's also one of the biggest philanthropists on here. Vegan teacher, those 70,000 could have gone towards feeding starving children. Also her, he bought everything in a store and donated it to charity or whatever, but that doesn't matter he literally has a food bank to give food to families that can't afford it meanwhile the vegan it's based on all like the uh the god defenders are coming out that, that that's good because he's like do, do you know like he's ba he's dipping into his own pockets i mean he makes an insane amount of money through merch sales i, I think he did say it's merch sales that funds the philanthropy channel got here. why is this a sad stream because we're talking about a vegan teacher again sorry teacher was doing absolutely nothing to help solve world hunger herself. When you search up that vegan teacher charity, unsurprisingly nothing comes up, with her only attempt at feeding the hungry being her complaining about others not feeding the hungry. Upon visiting her Patreon, it states, each donation, big or small, helps to sustain me so I can devote more time and resources to helping save the animals by educating others about not eating, wearing, or using them, which roughly... So you give her 27 Australian dollars a month and that will fuel her to go onto people's Twitters and bait pathetically to be a fail troll to get them to be a vegan which usually ends up backfiring and they just become a complete meat eater anyway he translates as lord miles he has a youtube channel and a recent video of him going to the range with some taliban in afghanistan they were very concerned with his lack of trigger control is he american it wouldn't surprise me. Something like, the money will go directly into my bank account and I'll continue to make videos framing decent people as evil anti-vegans, which is what she would do to Mr. Beast as her first video continued to roll. The vegan teacher's next criticism was that Mr. Beast didn't specify whether or not each item of food was vegan. $5,000 tacos. Are they vegan tacos made with beans and vegan cheese? This is $1 pizza. Is that vegan cheese? This is a $2 hot dog. Is that a vegan hot dog? Yet when you think about it wow. for a couple of minutes, this would... 
No, I don't think the hot dog that's been sat in a fucking freezer for two weeks is going to be vegan. It would actually be an incredibly dumb thing for Mr. Beast to do, as it would set an impossibly high standard for future videos. For example, if Mr. Beast attempted to appeal to the vegans once by stating that he was eating vegan food, he'd run the risk of backlash in future videos as the audience could now use leverage against him. One thing, though, I'm convinced of, I eat meat, I am a meat eater. One thing I'm convinced of is if you asked everyone in the world to, like, kill an animal to prepare it for like cooking like you watch it being killed I'm, I'm convinced that half of like everyone would end up being like veggie or vegan and i don't mean like i don't mean killing an animal yourself like you know getting the knife and preparing it i'm talking about like seeing them stuck in cages all day for like you know their entire life uh cages full of like shit and piss and all that and then the fact that they're basically thrown into these huge meat grinders I think that would turn a lot of people off. What one way that we all eat meat collectively, I think, is because of like that. Is it was it what's the buzzword? Is it cognitive dissonance? I don't know what the buzzword is. Some buzzword that explains it. But like, it's it's basically because you're not seeing it happen, you kind of put it out of your mind. You know how kind of you know how you'll see those ads about like starving kids and shit on the TV, and you'll think, holy shit, that's terrible. And then two minutes later, you'll be like, anyways, because it's just, it's out of your head, it's out of your direct sight, like you don't remember it anymore. But uh. Yeah, I, I, I'm convinced that most people would be veggie, but the meat industry does rely on that dissonance a lot, that you're not seeing it happen. Uh, like I, I eat meat, I happily eat meat. Uh, I think the only meat I don't eat is lamb because I've got sheep, but I'll eat steak, I'll eat chicken. I might go pescatarian in the future, maybe, but honestly, like I kind of enjoy steak too much. Him by stating, oh, you were eating vegan food before, why didn't you continue doing so? Ironically, making the consumption of meat less controversial. Additionally, while vegans have a reputation for being quite vocal, according to the data, only 2% of the US population is vegetarian, and out of that, only 0.5% of the population is vegan. That's surprising. I, I thought it'd be 2% were vegan. I thought it'd be more than that. That's... That's nothing. And therefore, making content to appeal to vegans would be a poor strategy when Mr. Beast has stated on numerous occasions that his goal is to simply reach the widest audience possible. The vegan teacher would then go on to state that Mr. Beast's video of him eating different foods worth different amounts of money was promoting violence and destroying the environment. Mr. Beast, unfortunately, I have given you so many X's here for promoting the violence. How many, like, people do you think the vegan teacher has made sure that they will never be a vegan in their life from how obnoxious she's delivered her message. Not in the least concerned about using a starving child to force her agenda onto others. Literally George Orwell's 1984. Yep. For not talking about the environment. Before going on to state that he needed Goober, I will still 100% eat the chickens legally objected to animal abuse. So goofy so silly to become a vegan animal rights activist in order to undo the non-existent damage you need to go back and undo the damage that you've done the first thing that you can do mr beast number one is become vegan number two become an animal rights activist for the rest of your life tell people that the videos that you've done in the past including this one you like like when she says stuff like this it has to be bait she's basically asking him to uproot his entire life Stop uploading videos and just become a vegan protester. I want you to stop doing these stupid little squid game Willy Wonka videos. I want you to go and upload every single video you protesting outside McDonald's. Watch how fast his channel will be killed. Watch how fast Mr. Breast's channel would be killed if he did that. That you're ashamed of and that you wish you had never done them. Which was concluded by the vegan... Do you know how many sponsors would pull out of YouTube if one of their biggest creators was shilling veganism? They would cripple the site. And then they'd literally, they'd, they'd pull Jimmy into an office meeting. That They'd pull him into a room and they'd be like, Jimmy, you're shilling veganism. That's not good. Most of our advertisers are like McDonald's and like fast food and shit. And, th and that's meat. That's bad. So uh, if you don't change your ways, we're going to take you out that good boy program where one view gets you $1,000. Teacher demanding Mr. Beast apologize in her comment section. Mr. Beast knows about- Mr. Beast, could you please do career suicide for me? Thank you. About my, my channel here. Make sure that he subscribes and that he joins- I'm actually, I'm amazed that she spelled that right. Kudos to that. Points me in the comment section to tell me that he's going to change. Unsurprisingly, the vegan teacher never got the apology. However, one thing she did receive <laughs> on the video. Why? Why did YouTube disable dislikes, man? We had one good thing. We could laugh at shit videos. 
All that removing dislikes did is protect shitty videos, man. Impressive dislike ratio of 96.4% alongside comments such as he literally spent. I would love to know like who, who, what YouTube channel had pull enough to pull YouTube aside and say, I'm getting hate. We need to remove dislikes. Most of his money saving the world and helping others. The amount of money he donated to people in need and to plant trees is more than you can make in a hundred years. Beast is a legend. Damn, got him with the, uh... The American dad profile picture there. He doesn't deserve this. However, with the vegan teacher's video receiving more views than any of her other uploads, only six days later, she'd post another video attempting to cancel Mr. Beast, this time titled, At Mr. Beast, Stop Paying for Animal Abuse, in which she'd go on to call Mr. Beast out for not specifying whether or not the base of the ice cream they were eating was vegan. But what is the base made out of? Is the base made out of something vegan? I don't know what you're eating. It's, it's some sort of cake, but you- It sounds like she's saying based. That, that, that's the only thing I care about. I, I genuinely do not care what she's saying. You didn't, so I'm going to put another X because you're not saying specifically that it's vegan. Two weeks after this statement, the vegan teacher would upload a third video in which she'd state that Mr. Beast was again promoting violence, this time by not having fruit and vegetables on his pizza in the I ate the world's largest slice of pizza video. Where is the pineapple? X, what on earth? What is this? I mean, that, that that's bait. Like that, like, where's the pineapple? Like, what, what, what does that make any different? You get vegan cheese. It's called cheese, I think. I just lie. Like, like that, when she does stuff like that, the mask is slipping a little bit that she's just like obvious fail troll. Pizza video. Where is the pineapple? X, what on earth? What is this pizza? Where is the pineapple? So random. Lamau XD. There isn't, there's not one single vegetable on there. Where are the mushrooms? Where's the spinach? What, what, what does that correlate? I mean, I get the pepperami, but like, what, how does that correlate? You can have vegan pizza. You get vegan cheese. Where's the broccoli? What else have you got on there? Like, are you, are you on about veganism or healthy? <laughs> no green well, what's even the argument anymore? You just move the goalpost. Peppers? No hot peppers? That's not, that's not food. What is that? Is there even sauce on there? Is there even tomatoes? Okay, so so she's gone from like food activist, like, like animal activist, to just a, a fucking food critic now, guys. Sauce. X. This was best summarized by a comment reading. Someone needs to explain. Apart from the pepperami, that could have been a vegan pizza. She wouldn't have even known. ...to the vegan teacher that putting vegetables on something doesn't make it vegan. However, this was still nothing compared to that vegan teacher's most outrageous... Th th this is why, by the way, I made one video on the vegan teacher and I never did it again. Because she's just obviously baiting. L like, w w when someone's baiting, it's not fun. It's, it's not like, uh, okay, everyone baits a little bit. Like, you remember when I made videos on Stomedy? Everyone baits a little bit all the time like that's normal but when you bait to this level where you're just like you know being so aggressive you're you're like giving these big holes to people for people to punch into that's so obvious that anyone in the community can do it it's just it sucks there's no like back and forth there it's l this comment of all three videos should state that because mr beast had a professional hot dog eater in his video this was promoting the food poutine poutine has cheese in it cheese comes from milk and milk is taken from cows and therefore mr beast is promoting the act of stealing why are you promoting people that eat large amounts of food and not only does he hold eating meat to the holocaust what did you say? Someone whose family was sent to Auschwitz. I think, okay, I'm, I don't think that's true. The world record for hot dogs eaten, but he has so many. Did you even say vegan hot dog at all? What else do you got here? Putsin with cheese on it? Cheese is comes from milk, which is stolen from mothers after their babies were taken from them. Do you think that kidnapping is okay, Mr. Beast? Kidnapping babies and stealing from them? Do you think that stealing is okay? Apparently you do. Unsurprisingly. Cows are livestock. Cat cows are a livestock animal. If if people stopped having milk, then like, you know, millions of cows would die because they have no there's no need for them. It, it, again, I don't understand that argument. All three of the vegan teachers' attempts to cancel Mr. Beast failed miserably. As like, okay, I, I'll be honest, because I, I live in the middle of nowhere. I live near a couple cow farms, like where there's milking and stuff, and I see it, and I do think, like, you know, it, it's so bizarre how the cows can either have a good time or a bad time depending on who actually owns them. So we've got some farmers. Uh, a couple of miles from us that own a milk farm and they treat their cows like complete shit they like whip them and stuff like when they're walking up the road with like a stick it, it's fucking vile it, it's actually brutal like i don't like it but then you've got another milk farm closer to us and they actually treat the cows there better and it's more humane and you can actually tell the cows look healthier there the cows look healthier so it really does depend on like uh 
Who, who's even dealing with the livestock animal in the first place? Unsurprisingly, all three of the vegan teachers' attempts to cancel Mr. Beast failed miserably, as did the two we discussed earlier. In fact, there really hasn't been a single bit of Mr. Beast drama that's had the slightest effect on his reputation. His bulletproof public image and masterful management of controversy turned every cancellation attempt. I want her toes so bad. Ugh. If she's <laughs> baiting by targeting famous YouTubers, this attention is exactly what she wants. Never understood people that like... Well, she's a fail troll, but she also wants to convert people to being vegan. But the problem is, like, it's a common known theory that people double down on their beliefs, even if they know that they're wrong. People will double down. So it's not... You need to persuade people, not, like, force it down their throat. Turn every cancellation attempt into water off a duck's back. And Master B's drama that's had the slightest effect on his reputation. His bulletproof public image and masterful management of controversy turn every cancellation attempt into water. I like how Sonny says, uh, Mr. Breast is a masterful, masterful. Sonny says, masterful, I'm British, masterful. A masterful way of dealing with controversy when it's just like, what does he do? He just ignores it. I remember when Mr. Breast's editor came for him saying something about his mom being like too intense or something. And, and Mr. Breast can just ignore it. He, he has built such a dedicated fan base that he does not need to acknowledge drama because he's punching down and it's below him. His fan base just like rip, rips these people apart. Uh, let me do some donos. And then uh, what's the, the Bing soy, was it? Because I did, see, I'm kind of interested in this actually because it is, it is in my recommended, but let, let, let's do some donos first. Fucking hell, we got a lot. The only Take a look. strong games the PS5 had was Spider-Man, but it has been ported to PC already. Yep. The only reason I could see buying a PS5 is for Ragnarok. Pyro, what happened to Derv and Matty Beer apps? Have some money, Pyro. I love your videos. Thank you. What happened to Matty B, Matty Brap's Brap? Pyro, do you want to know what the most unfunny thing on the planet is? Is it me? Yes, I mean. Is it me? Honestly. Is it me? Our humor is the equivalent of your average redditor who laughs at Luchonker meme. But he said honestly. I hate the GLaDOS donors, man. That feel when you can finally catch a Pyro livestream and it's another fucking Sunny 2 reaction video. Please God make it stop. Cry about it. Over this content. Cry about it. I gotta keep the lights on, man. The floodlights. As a trans person, I of course don't think the whole attack helicopter bit is funny. People say it's a joke. You were too sensitive, but it's a joke that mocks us. It's not funny and in very poor taste, especially with what we were going through. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> what, why does it? Why does the donor do that? Just has a stroke afterwards. Yeah, I, I never said it was uh I never said it was a good joke. It's it's in poor taste, but it's not as malicious as uh the way that I the way that crazy. they used it wasn't as malicious. The way that Jimmy used I it know anyway. She turned off my neurotoxin. I just couldn't prove it. She covered her tracks. Got that idiot wetly to lie for her. <laughs> you think this is bad? This chicanery. She killed me twice. This this chicanery? I have made a great lapse in my judgment. This, this chicanery? I hope I did the TTS thing right. If not, I'm quite the fool. A pyro that I've been watching since Car Sex, our best video of three. Thank you. Car Sex was my best video. I'm happy with it. Ironically, today's milk cows would literally die of their udders getting infected. They've been bred for their milk, so not milking them would literally make them sick. Yeah, which in a sense is even more sick and twisted, right? I didn't even know that. Their udders would get infected because the way they've been bred. Yeah, it's insane. That doesn't surprise me at all. Thank you, Ace Wonder, for joining. We had some joiners. Ace Wonder, uh, Soggy as well. Guys, I'm just going to do a solar shill here. We've got a maid stream. I'm going to dress up in a maid costume. Some of you might like that. Uh, if you guys join, then I'll be able to... Oh, wait, we just had a gift. Thank you, Cyric, again, for the gifted. I think you gifted the last stream, man, but thank you. I appreciate it. Right, anyway, 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 chat. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, right, let's uh, let's watch this. So you guys have been suggesting this to me nonstop, and I do have it in my recommended on YouTube. The story of TF2's strangest player. This has been a six-month investigation. I have collected.
What is it about? Dedicated to one of the most interesting players I've ever come across. Thank you to everyone in my Discord. Okay. You've got Uncle Dane commenting on it. He's the guy that uh, iDubs frequently works with. Another pyro stream without Bordek and Zy Club. So sad. He fell off. <laughs> oh, the yeah, yeah. Right, let me... Uh... This has been a six-month investigation. I have collected hundreds of gigabytes worth of 445 gigabytes. I will never question like the dedication and also Lord Miles was a Brit who decided to take a trip to Afghanistan while it was falling. During the ordeal he was memeing about it on the internet. There are some videos of the ordeal. I will never understand the dedication people have to the TF2 community and also slight mental illness. I've spent countless hours scouring the internet, but I think we did it. I think we found the strangest TF2 player of all time. Let me show you. Please be a pyro man. Please be a pyro. I'm actually beg. I, I pray he's a pyro man. On the 6th of January, I uploaded a video called The NPCs of TF2, which is a short compilation of all the wacky people I'd come across. What's that music he's using? What's that music? Hang on, hang on. What's that, what's that music? Is it of all the wacky people I'd come across whilst playing TF2. Around eight seconds. Oh, Isaac. It's Binding of Isaac. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. That's right. To this video, there's a clip of me. It's the, it's the item shop music. Waiting for a health pack to respawn when all of a sudden I notice a demo man below me who is perched on the side of Hightower's cliff, shooting stickies up at a gap in the floorboards. Now this isn't how most people play TF2, and I did think it was quite bizarre at the time, but it didn't go any deeper than that. I clipped it, I put it in my video, and that was that. A few people commented about how the strategy this demo was using was actually 200 IQ, but besides that, I didn't really think too much of it. Fast forward 18 days to the 24th of January, where I was playing a game on Moss Rock when one of my friends noticed that a Huntsman sniper on our team was taunting after every shot they fired. So, like any sane person would, we began to follow them and investigate what tomfoolery they were up to. We picked up a clean kill with the bushwhacker on a flanking demo, and then, well, <laughs> then... There's something about TF2 emotes that just kill me, man. We picked up a clean I, I kill talked about this in a... a demo, and then... I talked about this in earlier videos, right? In earlier streams. But TF2 was out on the Xbox and it, on the Orange Box. It was complete ass. They never updated it. But because it was based on the original build of Team Fortress 2, it was so bugged that if you did an emote, like a taunt, and then you jumped, you'd be able to basically float around, still having full control, still being able to shoot, still being able to do everything, but you're like taunting, right? So you would have, in so many instances, a soldier doing like the L thing, you know, when they get the, the rocket launcher and they do like, you know, the, the Fortnite L thing, but like rockets would be propelling out of their chest towards you while they're just doing this taunt. It was genius. It was and, so broken well, though. Well, then something quite spectacular happened. Surely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This random sniper decided to pull off a 360 Huntsman shot whilst falling to their imminent death and it- Oh my God. Wait, what the fuck? decided to pull off a 360 huntsman shot whilst falling oh my god yeah he got it and it Lados, actually worked. thank you for making videos prio your hands down my favorite commentary youtuber chimp with machine gun danger one who knocks better call saul public master beta not a real lawyer buzzword i really hope people like you never actually like talk to anyone in real life about breaking bad or better call saul because you will you will ruin it instantly but thank you this absolutely blew me away and you may actually recognize this clip because it featured in a video i released later in january called the auto Bells atrocity now it was really funny but again i honestly didn't think too I, I i played this map recently on tf2 and one thing i'm gonna say is if i see someone with an anime profile picture on tf2 i usually just dc because they are they are cracked anime profile pictures are absolutely cracked like they have no parental figure in their life but they are cracked beyond belief too much of it until i saw the comments where people were pointing out that this huntsman sniper who just pulled off the frag of their life was the same demo man we saw in my previous video and that ladies and gentlemen was when bing soy officially came onto my radar i don't know what it was exactly but this discovery got me really interested in bing soy because the way he played the game was unlike anything i had ever seen before and I wanted to know more. So the following day, I got to work. I started by creating a new text chat on my Discord called Bing Soy Signings, where people could submit any videos or screenshots they had. Literally just legal stalking. Had of his unusual behavior. And to my surprise, we started getting submissions really quickly. The first video was sent in by one of my admins, Corey, who discovered Bing Soy on Badlands spawn camping in a way that I have never seen before. Yeah. 
It's just air block. <laughs> Just, oh, oh, he's cracked. God. Yeah, he's cracked. What? Forcibly air blasting someone into water so you can pyro shock them? That takes ingenuity. Another clip from Corey also showed Bing Soy uh, camping his own team's teleporter. Another one of my. How do we know that this is the same Bing Soy though? How do we know these aren't just like impersonators? Admin's legs found Bing Soy on the map altitude, where he repeatedly shot at a wall with his shotgun before backpedaling off a cliff. <laughs> to his death later that game legs also it, it's genius how some of these clips he's absolutely cracked and then he just plays like he's got like it's just fucking a hand him peering off into the mountains at the edge of the map which i mean fair enough it's a it's a pretty scenic view but why what compelled him to do this this juxtaposition between bing soy's genuinely impressive plays and creative strategies to well this <laughs> oh, really dumbfounded me. I was so intrigued by the enigma that was Bing Soy, and I had so many questions that needed answers. So on the 31st of January, I decided it was time for me to suit up and get on the ground myself. My investigation began in the beautiful rainforest of PL Borneo, where I spotted Bing Soy playing engineer. At first, I didn't see anything too out of the ordinary. I mean, he just seemed to be playing some pretty stock standard engineer. But later in the match, he swapped to heavy, where I began to notice some oddities. Rather than holding down mouse one to continually shoot like a normal heavy would, he seemed to really like tap firing with the Tommy Slav as if he were peeking an angle in CSGO. I also <laughs> noticed... <laughs> just playing the game like a Rainbow Six Siege, just god sweat. That Bing Soy had quite the affinity towards taunting, because he was whipping out that stock minigun taunt after literally anything of any significance happening. He's taunting! Oh, he's dead. The investigation continued on to the next map, Mountain Lab, where things got a lot weirder. I kid you not, but for an entire 60 seconds, Bing Soy was absolutely determined to do this jump, which I am 99% sure is impossible. He did find the little ledge on the rocks you could glitch onto, but ultimately it was to no avail. No, he almost made the jump from the... He also seemed to be very paranoid as he was firing projectiles at literally everything on the map as he returned to the front line. And we also got another- He's either schizo or he's in like a Gmod ARG. Another glimpse of his Huntsman sniper. He saw like a- he saw like a dark shadowy figure in the corner of his screen. At the gameplay where he would randomly shoot arrows through the floorboards? Things started to get really weird on the next map. Badly. It's always people that are like that though. They play so poorly, but then they just somehow like god cracked. Where Bing Sway was playing Flog Pyro and for the period of about 15 minutes did nothing but um, well, whatever this is. I don't know if Bing Sway thought there were gang stalkers hiding in his walls. <laughs> gang stalkers? To every single surface of the map in flames and God, was it just bizarre to watch. I ended up on his team when we swapped to Badwater and it was more of the same. Except this time I was pocketing him, meaning he was actually racking up kills and he also started taunting directly in front of the enemy team's spawn door, which is just alpha as fuck. You, you have to respect that. This rampage on Pyro was followed by some scout gameplay, except not the normal kind where you're, uh, Shooting, uh, more the kind where you drink bonk to go invincible and then proceed to taunt directly in front of your enemies. <laughs> Next up, we landed on Snowy Coast, where things seemed pretty normal until... Uh, oh, Bing Soy is trying to shoot through walls as heavy, which if you didn't know, is impossible. I, I did that. I, I tried to shoot through walls at spawn when I played TF2, but I think I was actually like 14 when I did that. Ultimately though, I think Bing Soy... I genuinely thought if you aimed your gun like at the right angle, you could shoot through the little like chicken wire. Finished off the day with perhaps his most daring strategy of jumping off the edge of the map, using the base jumper to float and then trying to kill gamers Pyro, as he slowly creeped towards from? his inevitable death. That America. I want to... That one didn't go too well. So look, that was just one day of observation. We saw Bing Soy <laughs> But it, that one He's saying well. how it's so the look. strangest player. This is shit I do when I was playing TF. He might just be a kid. He might just be like an actual little a little zoom zoom. That was just one day of observation. And we saw Bing Soy cycle through at least like 10 wacky strategies. There was also some more footage sent to Bing Soy sightings in my Discord by Corey again. And yep, that's him doing his strange little thing. So look, after a full day on the field, we did observe a lot of strange behavior. Uh, that much was for sure, but unfortunately, I wasn't really any closer to understanding why Bing Soy played like this. But that was about to change, because my Discord made a very interesting discovery. Bing Soy had a YouTube channel. Now, it hadn't oh, been active in two years, my but it quite the backlog of TF2 content. Oh, the channel started off with some Minecraft God. videos in early 2018, but that soon turned into some pretty damn good TF2 fragments. <laughs> 
and take a look at the most recent upload, Cliff Enforcer, which features a lot of insane huntsman kills similar to the one I put in my video. It's like he's cracked, but he's also, he sucks at the game. It, it, this is amazing. It's like he's got two, it's like he's got, he's got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, like fighting for control of his brain. Video. There was also a bunch of pyro related stuff here, a class which Bing Sawyer appeared to be actually very good at judging by the quality of the frags he was getting. The channel basically proved to me that Bing Sawyer is far from being a noob, and in fact, I actually think he's really good at the game. It's just that he voluntarily handicaps himself with these wacky ass strategies, and I kind of have a respect for that. I guess the only sad part about this discovery was that the channel seemed to be inactive for now, which was unfortunate, but it actually wouldn't remain like that for very long. You see, a week or so had already gone by since the formation of Bingsoy sightings at this point, and a cult of personality was starting to emerge around Bingsoy. Thank you, so kid, uh, three, Nathaniel, and uh, Little Ducks for joining. He was growing quite the reputation amongst not only my Discord, but the wider Australian TF2 community. People were taking note of him when he was in games, sending messages. I, I would actually be terrified of being in the Australian TF2 I community. Get into TF2 earlier before it became infested with losers. It seems so soulful. I might, I might do TF2 after this. I might do TF2 after this video. Harley, how am I doing? I'm doing good, man. Hope you're having a good, uh, a good Saturday. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I'd hate to be part of the Australian TF2 community. Could you imagine? Like, I, I joined that server, and it's like, you, because I imagine this, the Australian side Society, is full of greasers as well. Thank you for giving and then like 300 ping on top of that. Years. Keep up the amazing work. Also, thoughts on this new video? I hate everything. I don't even know it's still uploaded. Vegan, good be vegan. No more Arby's roast beef. Did he upload? Oh, I hate Viral. Destiny the Witch Queen. Your videos got me through my night shifts and through the anxiety that built up before the birth of my daughter. Thank you. I, bro, I got a fan that has a kid? Holy, you must be, bro, you must be the oldest pyro fan by like, by like 20 years. Now, Congrats, man. Congrats on your daughter. They were finding his YouTube channel and leaving comments there, too. So, on February 6th, with a growing buzz around Bing Soy, I decided to once again suit this up. This is out of left field and gonna make me sound brainlet, but what is the sound bite you use that kinda sounds like Jake the dog or Bender dying slash screaming? I need it, so I'm trading you $10. Much love. I, I've, I'm really sorry. I have no idea what you're on about. The sound Jake the dog or Bender? I have no idea. I, I I don't know what your if if you gave like a timestamp in a YouTube video that worked, but down, Mr. Soy. This day's investigation first led me to Landfall, where Bing Soy was experimenting with a new strategy on heavy, rather than using his favorite. Was, that, was there just a guy called Fast? Landfall, where Bing based was experimenting with a new strategy on heavy rather than using his favorite tap firing tommy slab tactic he was instead making use of the buffalo steak sandwich and holiday punch meaning he was hunting down enemy gamers to secure some taunt kills unfortunately things weren't going all that well for being soy with this strat and to top things off i actually managed to get an accidental telefrag on him whilst i was observing i telefragged him <laughs> He did continue with the taunt kill attempts as we moved over to Viaduct, uh, but again, it didn't seem to land him any success. Things did begin spicing up when we swapped the process, though, as he switched to demo I with the sticky jump up so and bottom rope. On the, the first CDs in burning, can you roll out to mid, up? I ended up dying pretty quickly, but that did not matter because it allowed me to spectate Bing Soy, only to discover uh, this. It just doesn't look at the map the same way I do. I thought I usually look pretty vertical. He's gonna get like three kills now. More vertically. After this, he played a little demo night and began taunting after the kills. I was getting, which was some nice moral support, but other than that, uh, not too much else occurred. We did have some more footage sent to the Discord, however, where another one of my admins, Chop, found him spawn camping. I, I love taunting in TF2, though. I remember uh, playing a map, and there was a guy with an anime profile picture that was playing as a spy, and he was just, like, dominating me constantly. Like, like just, he got about, like, 10 kills on me. I killed him once, and then I taunted. And me taunting, I think, tilted the guy so much, he just kept saying, like, slurs and shit in chat straight away on Swegen in yet another peculiar manner. So look, it wasn't the most fruitful session of stalking being soy, but that didn't matter because yet again, my Discord had made another very important revelation. Not only was a Bing Soy website discovered, but oh, I had to feature in it. The this is going to be like some ARG thing. Where we could make out a few things. Firstly, was I wish his name was just Soy. It's the background. 
where we can see Bing Soy included some of his favorite loadouts like Huntsman Sniper, Lock and Load Demo, as well as his fabled spawn camping pyro shop. Now the next thing to note was the foreground where there are four figures. Thank you Slam Cam, Dismantle and uh, Jimmy for joining. The engineer on the left represented Brattles, an Australian TF tuber who also runs a really popular high tower server called Have Fun, which is one of Bing Soy's favorite. Now the next figure here is a soldier with a black painted Miami Knights Tyrant's helm, which of course represents myself, and this did come as a bit of a shock to me. To my right was my admin Quarius Pyro, who had not only submitted some of those clips I showed before, but it also started to form a bit of a relationship with Bing Soy. And finally, the one who probably doesn't need an introduction is Uncle Dane on the right, and he is featured on the banner because Bing Soy really likes the Uncle Topia servers. So th yeah, I think Uncle Dane is like the biggest TF2 creator, right? Or is it Lazy Purple? Thinks it's a better way of I need to I need to kind of brush up on my TF2 lore. And they're either with the website because in the about section there was a subheading named special thanks where he stated special thanks El Maxo has shown the TF2 gaming world that Bing Soy is something more than a myth. What? This was absolutely wild and one of my friends actually said something I was thinking. We need to seriously consider is Bing Soy an ARG? <laughs> it might be if it is. Um, I think is that, that as well. It, it is almost like it's an ARG, right? It really seemed like Bing Soy was some manufactured alternate reality rather than a real human being. It was discovered that Bing Because he plays the game terribly, but he's also like kind of good at it. He's not always good, but he's not always bad. And he's not mid either. It's so hard. It's so difficult to be this perfectly good and terrible. Bing Soy had a bunch of other channels on YouTube too, one of which featured an animation he created that has over 1 million views. I was honestly in disbelief of what had transpired thus far, and it turns out that was only going to continue as four days later on the 10th of- I like how he had to show the bit where you saw Winnie the Pooh's ass before he transitioned to the other date. February, Bing Soy Team Fortress returned from a two-year hiatus with a fresh upload. The video was titled Requiem, but there was something a bit strange about this upload because because the first 42 seconds showed this cryptic message of a happy stick figure progressively growing sadder and sadder. What? Why? What is happening? I still have no idea what to make of it. I like how the way it's reached now with YouTube, you could have someone having a, le a legitimate mental breakdown, losing all their mental faculties, and people would be like, It's an ARG! It's an ARG! This introduction, by the way. But at the time when I saw it, I was definitely starting to believe that the ARG theory may hold more weight than I initially thought. The description also read, something good can come from something bad, which was again, really cryptic, and I'm not fully sure what to make of it. The rest of the video featured some very cool pyro frags on Hightower, but that mysterious ass intro kind of overshadowed that for me. I will say though that Bing Soy did end up pinning my comment, so hey, we've got that going for us. Another four days later on February- The Soy Files. <laughs> It had seemed we really pulled Bing Soy out of YouTube retirement because we were blessed with yet another upload. The video is called Uncle Topia One Life Huntsman. The reason I love this video so the, the, This guy who made this video, he has such a good music choice. I've heard Binding of Isaac, I've heard Dishonored, and now he's using the Dying Light theme. He's got a very good choice in music for background in his videos. So much is the timestamps, where Bing Soy detailed literally everything that happened in the video. This ranged all the way from retreating at one minute to breathing at 34 seconds, and all the way to reflexive shot, shoot or die at two minutes and four seconds. In a video spanning just over two minutes, Bing Soy managed to include over 40. The worst thing is, I know this guy's good at the game, but I feel like he's the average TF2 player because every lobby I get put in, people are so absolutely cracked. Timestamps, which I honestly think is a cool idea that feels pretty average. TF2 scares me. I've never played a game that's free to play, but it actually gatekeeps itself. Avant-garde when it comes to TF2 content on YouTube. Now, I will admit that from this point forwards, the flow of the Bing Soy investigation came to a grinding halt on my end, so I moved on to some different video projects. So it was really my Discord that carried the movement over the next two and a half months. No Zero, a fellow Australian TF tuber, found him on March 12th taunting and zapping his way to the front line with a short circuit. Uh, the following day on March 13th, we caught a fake Bing Soy who tried to join the Discord, or at least we think they were fake because Mr. Soy seems to be a pretty elusive dude who rarely communicates in game, so seeing him join my Discord felt a bit unlikely. In late March and early April, there were a bunch of screenshots of him in game, and then on the 3rd of April, No Zero made his own video compiling his interactions with Bing Soy, and to be honest with you, it's bloody beautiful. Uh, we got to see more of his pyro shark, more of his taunting, and more of his affinity towards jumping off the map. So look, at this point it had been a while, but on the 22nd of April, I decided it was time for me to return. So I once again put on my boots and picked up my camcorder because we were going hunting. It's been two months. 
since I last watched Bing. Is he using the? He's using the Minecraft like horror music now. So here he is. See. Surely taunt back. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's based. It's cute. Website. It's cute. I think he knows what's up. <laughs> it's cute. Just gonna look at yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna maintain eye contact now. <laughs> he's so odd. Most mentally sane TF2 player. So he's um taking a break, taking a breather. He's he's in. He's in. He's in. He oh, yeah. I think he did sign. Yeah, you got a kill. Let's see what Bing's up to. Wait, what? Oh, he's got the bind set up. He wants the good spawn. The big so what's what? What is he doing? Is he, he's getting himself low so he can escape plan in. God bless. Again, uh, more of the same wacky strategies we were all accustomed to, but at this point, I really wanted to get deeper with Bing Soy and understand the mentality behind everything he was doing. Later that day, though, my Discord discovered a fresh upload on the Bing Soy channel called Uncle Topia Caberbola. And as the name suggested, it was a cool montage of him going around harassing inferior enemy gamers with the Sticky Jumper and Caber combo. The interesting thing about this video is that it actually went on to get some attention. Well, one thing I hate is that I, I know like so few of these weapons that are being used right now because most of my experience is tf2 on the xbox and it, it had no extra weapons apart from like the base setup algorithm at the time of writing this video has almost 10,000 views which is the most successful video on bing soy's channel to date he actually does some really cool work with the demo system in this video and playing around with all the camera angles so it's good to see that his channel was starting to get some more attention we also continued to get some more sightings as on the 12th of may var from my discord noticed he had a game banana account and had created a new hit sound and a custom model for the sticky jumper on the 29th of may digger darby found him taunting his way around the best map in the game CP Steel, and on the 3rd of June, No Zero managed to pocket him with the quick fix all the way behind the enemy team on Upward, where he did the classic demo base jumper sticky strategy over the wall. I ended up running into him on the 12th of June on Steel, where he was doing some strange exploration of the cliff face around point E. I also managed to score a high five with him on the next map Upward, where he went and redid that strategy of shooting stickies over the wall to the first spawn area. My absolute favourite Bing Soy sighting happened later that month on the 28th of June, where we got a dual perspective of a beautiful moment that unraveled. I don't think I've ever seen someone flick fast oh in my shit, life, what my fucking... taunt to get a kill, and boy was it something. As the investigation entered July, it- Hang on, my uh... Something up with my stream. Are we good? Okay, we're still live. Alright, based. Have we got any donos? We've got like two I could let through, hang on. I'll let these through. Oh, fuck. I have my fucking, I have my sound turned down. That's why the donors weren't, Big Soy. Uh, can you do TF2 after this stream? I might do a game, I might do a game of it. Actually start to pick up some momentum yet again, as I found myself running into him on Uncle Topia quite frequently. Things kicked off on the 1st of July, where I found him taunting on cooldown with the score shot, absolutely determined to get a kill with it. Oh, he's doing what I do, where you shoot the other way with it. <laughs> Like what? 10 days later on the 11th of July, I was playing with people from my Discord when, yep, you guessed it. What well, my, my problem is, my problem is with uh, games, especially with Team Fortress 2, is I always pick a character based on appearance, not their actual like skill set. So I would always play as a pyro, like even if, even if it's like a long range map and you just get absolutely obliterated by snipers. Even though when pyro can be completely useless, I'd still just force it. I remember swapping out my shotgun for a flare gun, like getting this small pixel perfect shot across someone on the other side of the map and only doing like 20 damage. That Bing Slow was playing on Uncle Topia. He continued to sticky trap our spawn and spam pipes out at seemingly nothing. Eventually, he did come out of his shell somewhat and started playing around as Pyro and Huntsman Sniper. It was during the session and at this point in the investigation that I finally mustered up the courage to send Bing Soy a friend request on Steam, as given how the vibe was pretty chill on the server. I bet he was intimidated by that as well. I bet like him sending the friend request, like he, the, there's so much like atmosphere built up around this guy that it would actually be terrifying. I thought it was more likely he would accept. However, it seemed that he ignored my what invite for the moment and the instead GDR he changed situation. his profile what? picture. Why? Bingsoy. The Judeon situation. I haven't watched his video on it. 
<laughs> he always does this. Which is something he actually did way back on the 31st of January whilst we were playing on Badlands. Oh, he changed it back. Just being soy. Change his profile picture. Dude, Imagine being that, like, obsessed about a guy that you think is an ARG that you literally, like, judge when he, you update when he changes his profile picture. <laughs> what? He changed it live. <laughs> Who does that? I don't know what prompts him. The, this just reminds me of like fan culture, right? Like when they see, like when a woman sees Harry Styles in public, he's wearing shoes and he bought new he's shoes. Man changing his profile picture and doing whatever he wants. It was pretty late at night at this point, so I decided to get some sleep. But one of our Discord investigators named Sleepy actually decided to stick around with Bingsley, which led to some very important developments when I woke up. Now, the first important development was that Bingsley accepted my friend request on Steam, which marked a nice progression in our relationship. The second part, which absolutely blew me away, was Bingsley's profile picture. Now, you remember that he changed it mid-game to this weird distorted close-up of the sniper, but the original one he had selected contained some secret messages within it. You can see that in the foreground is Bingsley's character. Again, this is like the most sane TF2 player. It is like there's sitting on a bench. I, I, I'm unironically intimidated by the TF2 community, man. And I basically came from like that kind of that. I wouldn't say I came from TF2, but I came from that like section of the internet. In this kind of cosmic spacey setting. What Sleepy discovered, however, is that in the background, can you watch the three GD on video drawings. after this? We can see it might make some good content. Uh, maybe. The, the drawing on the right is a light bulb, which represents my admin Corey's pyro loadout. In the middle is a little cube, which represents No Zero's profile picture. And most interestingly, on the left is Bing Soy's drawing of an actual photo of me. Yeah, that's right. It's a photo I used on Discord for oh a Oh my god. Time. It's a photo I used on my second channel. And it's also still my current Twitter profile picture. You can see the necklace, you can see the beanie, and you can see the thumbs up. Okay, that's weird. That's weird. So this it's, it's like a self-fulfilling ARG. I became aware of this information is because investigator Sleepy managed to ask Bing Sui a bunch of questions whilst it was just the two of them on Aquatopia late at night. And you can see in this transcript that Sleepy asked, are there any TF2 YouTubers you enjoy watching? And Bing Sui responded, look at my profile pic. Sleepy then followed up with, are those three in your profile picture the only YouTubers you watch? Which Bing Sui responded to with a no. So Sleepy asked, but are they your favorites? Which Bing Sui responded with yes. Uh, hello, uh, hi there. This is editing El Maxo here, and I actually have to let you know something that I've learned since I wrote the script for this video. Uh, you see all these the lovely questions Sleepy prepared and, and Bing Sui responded to in this text document? Well, they were actually sourced in quite an unbelievable manner. Um, we know Bing Sui isn't big on communicating through text or voice chat, so to get the answers to these questions, and I kid you not, Sleepy spent almost two hours in the middle of the night going around Koth Lakeside having Bing Soy either shoot at letters on signs or draw them with bullets or use the Scottish resistance to, to spell them out. Which what? Sleepy would proceed to transcribe in text chat and Bing Soy would shake his head if they were right. It, it wasn't just like he spelled letters out with shooting holes in the wall with his gun. Out messages. He had this whole actually most mentally stable TF2 player. Whole process, and I had no idea about it when I wrote the script for this video. Sleepy has the full one hour and 47 minute recording on his computer, but he sent me through this small section to prove it, and oh my god, what the fuck. I had no idea Sleepy went to such length to secure some answers. I like, I like how Bing Soy up there, his icon is just like a silhouette as well. Like, that is just maximum intimidating. This is from Bing Soy. So I have included the full transcript in the description, and a big thanks to Sleepy. Th this isn't even abnormal for the TF2 community, though. It's not abnormal. Because that is dedication to the cause. But God, finding this out the next day sent me spinning. We were now even deeper into the Bing Soy rabbit hole, and I was all for it. It was at this point that I knew I had to make a documentary on this, because the story so far was too goddamn interesting to pass up on. Sleepy also collected some more footage of Bing Soy whilst I was asleep, and it, uh was some of the strangest stuff I've seen so far. The next day, whilst I was playing on Bomb Blitz, I came across Bing Soy yet again, hiding in a bush as Huntsman Sniper. You may again recognize this clip because it featured in my last clip dump and marks Bing Soy's third official appearance in an El Maxo video. So look, it was clear at this point that the way Bing Soy played TF2 was strange. I don't think anyone could deny that, but we still didn't know why. What fueled that? That is the most intimidating thing you can see on Steam, by the way, seeing that someone's profile is private. I, I actually get a shudder through my spine when I see that. The man behind the mask. By the way, guys, uh, my Steam profile is completely public. I do actually have a trade offer if you want to give me money. Well, we could theorize. I bet we I'm could come up with some wild speculation. And we I've been watching since 2015. And maybe edge You're 37 and you've been watching since 2015. You, you have to be the oldest. Yeah, there's no doubt. 
There's no doubt. That's insane. Wow. I got someone that watches me who's 37. That's so cool. I, I genuinely thought my oldest viewer would be like two. Just that little bit closer to an answer, but why would I do that? If I wanted to know the truth, I had to ask Bing Soy directly. So I conjured up this grand message with five questions in it. Number one was what compels you to play the game like you do. Number two was what is your favorite unconventional strategy to use. Number three was do you have any long-term goals with TF2 or your YouTube channel? Four was have you enjoyed the increased level of tension you've gotten in the past six months? And five was what piece of advice would you give to the TF2 community? I didn't really want to poke and prod into his personal life, but I did want to get a better idea of what made him tick imagine he just sends him a message he's like why are you so fucking weird can what, what's wrong with you what what why don't you talk in chat and why don't you add me on steam in tf2 i wasn't fully sure if we'd get a response given how private bing Sui seems to be but given sleepy managed to ask him some questions i was praying we would get some form of response and so i waited and i waited it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen and i waited it's not but gonna happen. I never got that response from nah, Bingsley. I no. tried this last ditch effort of investigating him whilst he was on Upward, and just as you'd expect, he was on his favorite pick, Huntsman Sniper. He was getting kills. The, the, this man has evolved beyond the need for text. He has evolved, but who's messaging me on Steam right now? Who the fuck is that? Who's messaging me? Play TF2 with you after? Okay, yeah, maybe. I might do that. He was taunting a lot, and hey, he even went for a game-winning shot. Something fell so off weird the map about the TF2 the community specifically. But that was it. So I, I sat there, lovely usernames. I reflected. There's nothing quite like it. And I had a sort of a... Yeah, it, it's got, like, kind of an ugly beauty to it. Nah, not ugly. Like, a bizarre beauty to it. Epiphany. Because I think... The fact that the community is, like, still going as well, like, even so today. Can teach us a lot about TF2. You know, we don't always have to lean on what's meta. We don't have to keep going back to the loadouts which we are most comfortable with. We don't always have to obsess over the objective and sweat our asses off. Sometimes it's good to get out of our comfort zone and try and unlock that we've never used. What the fuck is that mod? Vintage beard and then... What the fuck is that? After playing TF2 for so long, I think we subconsciously lock ourselves into these rigid play styles and fail to experiment and push the game to its limit. You know, Thank I you, get Nitro, that you have 20,000 kills on your strange sniper rifle, but maybe on that next life you could take a note out of Bingsoy's book and give the Huntsman a go. Or maybe the next time you're on demo, you could swap out that iron bomber you love so dearly and try out the lock and load. And hey, it has been a while since you used the holiday punch as heavy, hasn't it? So you know what? I like how he says all this, like almost like, you know, experience different things, experiment with your loadout. Like, bro, I just play Pyro. That's the only thing I play as. Maybe Bingsoy isn't so strange after all. Honestly, I think he encapsulates the beauty of TF2 so well. So look, maybe Bing Soy will respond to, to, to my message one day. Maybe he'll provide Obama, me with all the answers I, I wanted Barack and we'll reach Obama a nice and clean that resolution the to the enigma Bing that is Bing Soy. But honestly, I don't really want him to. I don't really want him to. Want him to. <gasps> He's gonna reach out. That's where things were supposed to be. He's gonna reach out. Oh my ending, god. Out, oh my god. One day, I noticed a Steam notification when I got back to my PC from Bingsoy, and he had sent me a link to a Google Drive folder. I did record a live analysis of discovering this folder with fellow investigators Corey and Sleepy, which I will weave in at times, but it was honestly a mess, so I'm just going to do some post-commentary to explain everything that happened after this point. The Google Drive Bingsoy gave us contained four files. The first was a file named El Maxo's Questions, which as the name suggests, contains those questions I mentioned earlier in the video. The next file, called Readme, is unfortunately only for my eyes as directed by Bingsoy, but I will say that he gave me express permission to use I'm everything else he sent that in this Hirohiko folder. Akari hasn't tries to copyright folder strike video, you from so you using worry about the word that. Next up was a folder named seconds, Main Images, lol. which contains the bulk of what we are going to be analyzing. But before I get to that, I want to discuss the content. Imagine if he opens the folder and it will just be pictures of his house. <laughs> of other, which it's like, I know where you live. Contained three images. The first was a drawing titled Stick, which contained a stick figure drawing of my soldier with his tyrant's helm, along with my little dog Mackie on the shoulder. I also presume that it's Bing Sui on the right, but what I found a little distressing is the straight expressions on their face, which don't suggest much happiness, which is a little sad. The next image was called Sticker, and this contained something similar to those visuals we saw in the intro to his video, Requiem, which was a little distressing. We can see someone who seems to be isolated from a group of people, but we'll talk a bit more about this later. The final- I, I've got a nasty feeling that this guy, Bing Soy, the, the kid in Isaac, in Binding of Isaac, I mean Isaac the character, that, that is probably based off of this guy. 
and his home life. The image in the folder was called Stickest, which seems to be an MS Paint drawing of someone approaching a house in the woods. I'm not sure how to interpret this, and the only thing I could really recognize was a TF logo in the window. Thank you, so Sapphire, if you have for any joining. Ideas as to what this may mean? Be sure to leave it in the comments. I will admit that folder was quite cryptic, and I'm still not fully sure how to interpret it. But the most important stuff for us is in the folder named Main Images, in which Bing Sui has not written his answers out to my questions, but instead drawn them. We can start with question one, which was what compels you to play the game like you do, and here was his response. The first image which depicts someone pouring a liquid into a glass, we deciphered to mean experimentation, which confirms our belief that Bing Soy likes to push boundaries with the strategies he uses. The second image depicts a little astronaut on the moon with a flag, which we believe to mean a sense of accomplishment. Maybe Bing Soy wants to be the first person to popularize these strategies and make them more well known. The one thing we weren't sure about was what looked to be- I really wish I had people this mentally unstable in a- uh in my community man like like me ch me chasing this shit this is this is genius this is so cool a little play button on the moon so perhaps he wants to grow his youtube channels with these different types of strategies we weren't 100 percent sure the third image we choking oh that's uh that's the magician guy from inscription the little green guy deciphered as genuine insanity uh, yes. with the eyes. We didn't realize it at the time, but as famous YouTuber It's Feckin' Raw from YouTube channel It's Feckin' Raw told us, is that this was a drawing of a character from the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I'm not going to act like I've ever played it. So he's so reused, he's reused sure that. that symbolizes. The fourth That's interesting. Pretty obvious. So again, if he's part of the inscription fan base, he's doubly insane. Like he actually, he needs to be locked up and looked at. And we think this means Bing Sui wants to level up his intelligence in the game with what he can do. I mean, it's no surprise, but by doing all these wild strategies, Bing Sui is definitely going to have a more broad knowledge of TF2 and how it works. And finally, the image I found most interesting was a little Bing Soy on scales. It seems that he thinks that there is more negativity in the TF2 community, as symbolized by the broken heart weighing more, and Bing Soy wants to use his wacky play style to bring more love and positivity to the community, which I think is really admirable. So, to answer why Bing Soy plays the game so differently, it's because he likes to experiment, he wants to be the first to succeed with these strategies, he's insane, kidding, I don't fully know about this one. He wants to level up his intelligence and- I don't know, he is insane. He genuinely- d don't, don't put JK. If you've been following this guy around for so long and he plays like a literal line of code. Finally. And then he's sending you very vague messages and images. He wants to bring more positivity to the community. The second question I asked him was what was his favorite unconventional strategy to use in TF2? And the answers are a lot more direct here. At the top left, we can see the classic Girardi and Bushwick. I just love only in TF2 would you get this man. Only in TF2 would you, would you get like someone this bizarre that they create this almost like ARG. A combo, which I will admit, I it's, it's so don't cool. think is all that unconventional. The bottom left is a strategy we have seen a lot of in this video. And that oh, is thank you, Bing Dismantle, for the five gifted, man. Appreciate it. Huntsman plays he loves to do. Finally, and what was one of my favorite pieces of art he made for this, is the Pyro Shark, which of course means that one of his favorite unconventional strategies also happens to be Pyro Shark. The third question I asked him was if he had any long-term goals with TF2 or YouTube, and this one was interesting. The first image here is easy to decipher, and it's clear Bing Sui really likes YouTube and wants to see his Okay, so that's growing. Yeah. To. The second- He's, like, if he's drawing this stuff, he is actually talented as well. The image was a little complex, so we'll take it bit by bit. So that's like, that's play, that's the playtime icon on Steam. I'm not sure what that is. That's like uploading. It's an information icon, so maybe he's teaching people. You've got the lambda sign there. So, like Half-Life. Oh, like, yeah, like a mod. it is an information sign, which we assume means that Bing Sui wants to put out some educational content about, firstly, demos, because as we've seen, he's actually really good with using the demo system. Secondly, video making in general. Thirdly, we weren't too sure about, and the fourth- I mean, that, that that's just playtime. That is the same icon as playtime on Steam, right? No, it's not. It's a little bit different, actually one kind of looked like a strategy or maybe movement, we weren't entirely sure about that. The third image was a wholesome one. Uh, as we can see, is a love heart in a little film reel with my tyrant's helm, No Zero's icon, Corey's light bulb, and Uncle Dane's NG, which may mean there's a video coming out or maybe even some potential collabs. So I'm not sure, but it seems pretty exciting. The final image, or rather group of images, was all of Bing Soy's different YouTube channels linking into one main area off screen. So maybe this means a central channel is coming or a crossover, or maybe even a Bing Soy cinematic universe, which would be very awesome. So to summarize this third one, we can see he has goals about growing his channel, making some educational content, a potential collab or video with some other creators, and perhaps some more crossover with his animation and music channels. The fourth question I asked him was what were his thoughts on the increased level of attention he has gotten from the community in the past six months? And this answer was both intriguing, but also saddening. The uh oh, this is when it, this is when we go into schizo territory now. The answer was both intriguing, but also sad. Oh God, oh God. Oh no, the guys, this isn't good. Guys, 
I think... Uh-oh. I think he may be suffering with a little bit of imposter syndrome already, guys. Oh, goodness gracious. The first image relates back to one of his drawings in the first response, where he feels that the TF2 community has more negativity than positivity, and he wants to balance it out. Now, after <laughs> He's one of the people that wants it to be paid again, to kick all the free people up. This it actually tells a bit of a story with the timeline of images, starting with Bing Sui on the left being found by myself, No Zero, and Corey. The attention from us, and I assume the wider community, prompted Bing Sui to blow the metaphorical dust and webs off his camera, or in this case, his YouTube channel, and started making videos again. We can see he did- He's actually really talented if he can make art like this. Like, I know it's basic pixel art, but the- but the understanding and comprehension. This cool little drawing That's so cool. This Kaber video and was surprised by the amount of positive attention it received. <laughs> this is nice. I like how they would just go, nice. Of positive attention. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> nice. This has led him to being surprised by all the people who recognize him in game and has also made him a lot more stressed about making videos as it's a time consuming process and uh, don't worry Bing Sui, I, I definitely hear you on that one. Now in the next image we can see that Bing Sui sees all this new attention as a double edged sword because he is grateful for it and having his work seen but he's also stressed out which makes sense after gaining a lot of eyes on you so quickly. The next image I wasn't all too sure on so I shall let investigator Sleepy and Corey give their live analysis. I think it's like he's showing that he's going towards the future and while the future is uncertain he feels, he feels as though like he's... he's avoided sadness or something similar yeah because i know pre the way i see it is like he yeah his journey has a lot of dead ends like if he branches off to the wrong path it's going to be a dead end previously with tf2 he like he did quit for a bit yeah um because of the community so this like new approach might and it's not even like that path that path has a question mark so it's not even like that path is the right path but it's like the one he's going down i think because orange is meant to symbolize him as well right so maybe this is where he is currently like he doesn't really know but he knows that there's been like dead ends that he hasn't gone down be that's interesting it's not um he doesn't know what it could be it's not the negative community right he's used to the next image shows bing soy by himself around a group of people showing that he feels isolated and disconnected from those around him we okay th this is just everyone watching this stream chat you can agree right this is this is just all of us this is everyone watching this stream this is me this is you it's like soft incel place to do it which is something that makes me sad one thing i've wanted to avoid in this video is otherizing bing soy which i get i can't completely avoid given the bizarre nature of how he plays the game but it does break me a little that he feels this way about the community around him and that's something i definitely want to fix the final image shows this giant magnifying glass with an eye staring down on bing soy which links back to the <laughs> idea of the stress <laughs> the amount of people saying yes in chat is actually so depressing <laughs> and having everything he does watch the final question i asked bing soy was if he had any advice to give the tf2 community and it Ugh. actually appears he does it i found this interesting because he perceives there to be a lot of negativity in the community but maybe he doesn't see it as his role to comment on and give advice to everyone about as he may just see it as his own personal goal for him to do his best on to improve the state of things the final two images in this folder was this cool bit of art from bing Sui where he features his new little logo for his team fortress stuff and a little thank you which i am honestly honored to receive That's cute. i decided That's to make cute. this my desktop background because it looks really sick and i am really thankful to have discovered bing Sui, who's taken me on such a wild ride for the past half year so that's everything i didn't expect any of this and i wrote a script as if he wouldn't respond but to my surprise we actually got some answers i think the way bing Sui plays tf2 is great because it's easy to fall into these rigid play styles we've become accustomed to after many years of playing and he breaks that entirely whilst i will admit that even sometimes i can't comprehend what he's trying to go for with his strategies that doesn't really matter because he's just a dude playing the game how he wants to and picking up some video worthy clips in the process. So look, uh, to tie this all together, I want to give you the ending I wrote to this documentary, assuming Bing Sui wasn't going to respond, because I think it actually ties everything. Hang on, chat, I'm gonna piss one second. Everything together really nicely. There was actually one question. Thank Sleepy you, Albert, for joining Mark. That late night session, which I Bannon boy. Left out earlier, but... Oh, did someone gift? I think someone gifted. Oh, thank you, Shy Weez, for joining. But I do want you to share. Shy uh, Weez. Do you have any advice for other people? What's something you'd like to convey? To which Bing Sui responded, keep an open mind. So maybe, just maybe the next time you see a cliff and there's an enemy just across from you and you happen to have the Huntsman equipped, why not go for that shot? I think it's what Bing Sui would want us to do. Thanks for watching. That's cute. That was a really good video. That was really well put together. All right, I'm going to boot up uh, TF2 probably. I'm going to let these donors play though. Uh...
I'm gonna get the funny mic out though, hang on. I would much rather dunno once a month and see you in a maid dress. Nobody wants to see a fat British man in a dress. The mental image even entering someone's psyche. The form of self-harm. A cat with sleepful is wearing it would be preferred. Yo, you me K up in TF2. Come on, let's run it. Add me in Discord. Okay. The funny mic's coming out. Can't find a higher membership option on YouTube, so here you go. Love your content. I could probably do like one game. Have you ever? No, I actually haven't ever. Help me, please. Okay. Watch the new Gideon video about Twitch PLSSSSSSS. Um, uh, there we go. Okay. We good? Okay. Well, let me get a... Uh... Hi Pyro, thank you for streaming on my 17th birthday and making it more special. I've been watching your videos for a while and can't get enough of it. Keep up the good work. Oh, shit. Okay, entropy. Just waiting for Half Life to boot up now. Okay. There we go. Okay. I haven't touched this in so fucking long, I forget how. Loadout not available. Couldn't connect to the item server? What? Okay, great. Literally can't even... Oh no, I got my shit. Okay. Yep. And then... Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, I didn't know I had that mod on. Okay. Oh, whoa. Okay. It's been...